Well, here I am again. This is <laughs> this is a bit of a bit of a run up for Trinity Four because for three nights of this week I've had some of the the most uh, influential and exciting people in on Earth, certainly on our planet. And um, the, my guest this evening is absolutely no introduction. You have been living on Mars if you don't know who the man is sitting next to me today. Um, and so with no further ado, I want to say uh, thank you, Mark, for joining us today for a little live session. Thank you so much for having me. And it's nice to see you again, as always. Thank you. Well, you are why I like what, you know, I mean, it's been a strange journey because I joined Flat Earth in 2015, a little bit after you, but I think quite quickly in my Flat Earth journey, I came across your name and your work and so on. And it was obviously important to me in trying to kind of clarify that I wasn't losing my mind thinking that the Earth is, is flat and stationary. Uh, so it was important to me, but I think in the last few years, uh, your role in supporting and championing activism has been something that has been of value to me personally. Um, so I'm grateful for your continued effort. And people who are listening won't know that um, I've done a few events lately and Mark has every time come and supported, um, given me a video, put something out to, to let people know. We did a Flat Earth event in, in South Africa. Mark was you know, kind enough to support that. So I'm genuinely grateful for that. I'd, happy to do it. I, I love. I, I mean, I'm sad that over the last couple of years we we've done less because of the restrictions that were out there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I tell people, look, if you want to do a meetup, I will absolutely help you do it because it's one thing. You know, most of our members are are still in the closet. We have more and more coming out every day. But the you know, if you're brave enough <laughs> to get you, you know, not just put yourself out there and say, Oh, yeah, by the way, this is what I believe, but I'd like to, you know, do a, a gathering. It's like, Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, because mm -hmm. because it's so tough just to get to that point that I'll, I'll give you, you know, all the time I got. Uh, and, and if I can come, I will. You know, I did a um, uh, a meetup in uh, Indianapolis up in Indiana up here. And they, they flew me out for it. It's like, oh, yeah, if anyone wants to fly me out for a meetup, I will absolutely be there. Sure. And so I took a, took a red-eye flight, and uh, it was a lot of fun, And uh, which is why I'm, I'm such a big believer of, like, the conferences as well. You know, the big one in um, South Carolina on the east coast of the United States, which is coming up in a couple months. I haven't, yeah. I, haven't done, I haven't done one since Dallas. No, that's not true. I did do... I did do the first one when things started to lock down, but I skipped last year because I was worried about the airlines. But, uh, yeah. Big, big fan of meetups and activism. And activism, oh, is that, yeah, go on. Oh, I, I want to mention there was a guy, um, he, I, I, he was a guest on my podcast. His name was Peter Jarvio. I'd never heard of the guy. <clears throat> you want to talk about anonymous, weird activism. He goes to American campuses and spends the week there, sets up the table and the, the, the boards, and he's out there, no megaphone. And he'll spend eight hours a day and just hitting people, but you'd never know it because he doesn't make any online content about it. Yeah. He doesn't re he doesn't record himself. So the only way you know is that if if like a university student starts filming him and then post it on their thing, because you know, I, I you know, I got emails I'm going, sorry, man, I, I didn't I don't really know your your work. He goes, Yeah, I don't really publicize it much. I was like, No, you don't publicize it at all. But he loves he's one of those people that loves doing it. And yeah. and that's the, so it's good for yeah. you, absolutely outstanding. Well, I actually, yeah, I watched that video of you talking to the guy, and I was so impressed, you know. And I was like, yeah. this guy's putting us to shame here you know, in the UK, well, you know, up well, for four in, hours. Right. In some ways, yes, but on the other side, it's a it's a shame that he doesn't have, you know, just set a freaking camera up, man, mm -hmm. and film it. You go, know, people would, would would love to watch it. I mean, he's bulletproof in terms of you know water off a, off a duck's back. Type mm -hmm. type thing. My only thing I disagree, you know, if he's listening to this, my only thing that I disagreed with him was he's one of the um, uh, the diehard Trump followers that said, oh, you know, that he's coming back. He'll yeah. he'll return. And, you know, it's like, OK, that's yeah, yeah. great. <laughs> but well, a few of my good flat earth friends uh, fell for the Q thing. Really hard. No, but yeah, the Q and on. Drive and survive, and Roxanne, and these people. I was like, "What are you guys doing buying into all this stuff?" Still, uh, but no, my, 
Do that now, you know. And uh, but I was I was actually saying to um, conspiracy music guru last night because he happened to be I happened to drop that name, but he happened to be around my place for dinner last night. And um, oh, he and, was. Yeah, and he, yeah. <laughs> I'm in Spain at the moment. Oh, um, that's, that's very very cool. Yeah, well, next time you run into him, say hi for me. I certainly will. I'm going to see him in about a week. So because um, you know I put I. I put his music on pretty much every single activism thing I do now. That's yeah, it's awesome. just now now that he lets me do it, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll throw it out there. So I have to randomize it. Anyway, go ahead. Well, he's got a new song, you know, he's got a new song coming up uh, very soon. And I'm hoping uh, that I might get a little sneak preview of it at his place next week and I'll film it and try and get it, get a little bit of, um, you know, get, get it out there a little early. But, you know, if he's okay with that. So we'll see. Um, but I'll certainly tell him um, that you said hello, and he's yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously grateful for all the um, support he's had. And uh, I recently saw an, an Owen Benjamin video where he was going, "Man, this guy's a genius, man." Um, so yeah, no, much. But we were saying he doesn't really like being in front of the camera, and I was saying That's the same scary. thing. I think, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, but 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 the, the, when I do activism face to face with someone without a camera in my hand, it's better. Uh, then really? I do camera. Yeah. Oh. yeah, because the camera changes things and for me and also for um, the person in that. And I genuinely, honestly can tell you that the most heartfelt interactions I've had have been without a camera. You know, it, once I bring the camera into play, it kind of changes things. So I've had amazing stuff on film, but the best stuff is in my head. I've never been able to film it. Um, and that was just a fly. Sorry, I wasn't. Um, yeah, no, and I, I think, by the way, you're, when you do your activism, it's more heartfelt. You know, mm -hmm. you, you tend to try to tap into people's emotions and you have such conviction on your side that it really resonates with them. So I would imagine, yeah, without the camera, you know, you really get some great mm -hmm. stuff. But Peter's thing, he's just hitting them. He's just hitting them as hard. You know, he's hitting them with as many facts as he can, pointing at the board, pointing at the board. And, and hopes that, you know, he can plant something before they walk away. But uh. Awesome. Well, I actually approached uh, my daughter's university some years ago because they had a Flat Earth Society there or a Flat Earth, um, I don't think they called the Society, but they had a Flat Earth group there. And I approached them and said, hey, would you like to have me come and have a chat? And they said, yeah. And I said, yeah, the link to my YouTube channel. I never heard from them again. Um, <laughs> But, but, but um, you know, I think Jason and Stan and I think uh, Robin was were, were planning to do a university tour in the month or two before the Globe Live tour kicked off, you know. So, uh, sorry, so before the pandemic pandemic kicked off in, in 2020. So, so we they had planned on that. And for me, university campuses are a great place. So if other people are listening, going, yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe that's a place. And I'd hope to turn up myself there in, in, in the future as well. Uh, I've done a lot of um, uh, university classes remotely, you know, where where it's weird. I'll get a science. You've probably seen some of them where a science class will contact me and say, oh, yeah, can you if we put you on a on a screen at the far end of a, a table, will you talk to our class? I was like, yeah, sure. You know, I, I want want my my reaction. Usually what I want to say is, you know, to the teacher, it's like, if you're dumb enough to let me in that room. By all means, and he think, he thinks that it's like oh yeah he's gonna come on and I'm gonna come off as uh, you know really really uneducated, and that the class will pick up on that. It's it's, it's the exact opposite. You just, I mean I I can see the lights that turn on when I when I'm talking to him. It's like yeah, like, that's awesome. I got questions. I got questions. How do we contact you? Uh, it's like everything <laughs> from, from from university students down to um, middle school. We I've done seventh and eighth graders, which is like, wow. I never mm -hmm. ever would have thought that a, a teacher would have uh, allowed that yeah. in. That's fantastic, actually. And we, we were again talking to Alex Michael last night because he's finished his final book. Uh, he's got these children's books come out, you may have heard of them, yeah. which are all following the songs that he's done. I think there's seven in the series. So, I, I we were talking, we were talking about getting my little boy. Uh, who you once called the Flat Earth Baby, <laughs> I think I've like, to, um, to read them, to read one of them at least. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I think that'll go down really well. I, educating the children, and we've realized this with our five-year-old, is that there's so little, there's no information out there, so little information that you can get that isn't tainted with dinosaurs and globes and NASA, or, you know, spacemen and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm really chuffed that he did that. 
and I'm going to see if I can get my own uh, book going. Cool. That's great. I, I want to I want to share a little personal uh, Mark Sargent anecdote with you. you oh you God. <laughs> but back in like I'm going to say about 2016, before I had Trinity Four, my channel was um, my own name, and I was in flat. I was I didn't really want to put too much flat Earth stuff out because my, my I'd only set up a YouTube channel to promote my my my, my war book, um, <laughs> and so that was had had military types and all those, and I knew already that they were shutting me out, you know, because I was talking about flat Earth. So I didn't really want to make a lot of noise on that channel, but I was using it for comments. And I went into a comment one time and, and I wrote that, um, in, I think in your channel, and I wrote that I've written a book before and you very kindly said to me, oh, why don't you write a book on, uh, on flat Earth, both you and Patricia, actually. Uh, so that was my first encounter with you. Wow. And yeah, and what people won't know is that I, my next encounter with Mark, it was um, in in um, in Wales uh, uh, doing activism. Right. That was my, the next time I, and it was really nice to do activism side by side with Mark. He's really good at it. You're, you're really good. Oh, well, thank you. I mean, I, I I do what I can. I my my street stuff. I I am still naturally shy when it comes to some things. But I'm, but I, but I open up when I, when people fire, start hitting me with questions. Yeah. You know, it's one thing I, I don't like. I can't. I could never do what you did in that. Um, was was it? Um, was it Vice? What was that? What was that group or the Guardian? Where oh, you know they right. open up. The, was it the Guardian? Yeah. Yeah, where they open up with that segment where you just bellowing out at Speaker's Corner, which I oh, still man. to this day I love. I know you probably don't love it as much. But you know, at the top of your voice, I could never do top of your voice type <laughs> activism because you'd have such a great voice for that, especially in a place like Speaker's Corner, you know, where they're known over the decades for, for yeah. that sort of thing. And uh, but when people, you know, wanted to say, hey, I've got a question about this and that, it's like, yeah. And then as I'm answering it, if more people start filling in around and I'm yeah. still, and I'm, now I'm not just talking to this guy, I'm talking to a group of people, I've got yeah. no problem with that. I love QA. Yeah. And you have a good presence about you, and you're a, you have a stature because you're about six and a, a bit foot on you. So you you, yeah. you know it helps. That's why in Speaker's Corner they take a, a, a you know a little a, an apple box, little box, so a little bit of height above yeah. everybody else. You know, and, I, and that I'm not, I'm just shy of six foot. So I've always been saying, you know, I've got to take a box. I've got to you know get up a little bit. <laughs> so you well, can, but, you, but you've got you've got this these you've got something different than me. I mean, yeah, it helps to be six two. But uh, but you've got sort of that rugged, good look, that that worn, you know. You, you look at your face, and there's a lot of character in your face, and you know, there's there's a certain. I'm not trying to blow smoke up your ass, but there's a, there's a certain wisdom to your face, you know, when you're talking. And you, you, when 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 I look at you, I never think it's like this guy has no idea what he's talking about, you know. Which is which yeah, is great. I, thank you, thank you. And actually, that's what I see. You know, so, so people, I'm not trying to blow smoke on my own ass, but it is nice to have my soul and pay me a compliment. I'll take that one. But, yeah. but when I started doing this, of course, it was new to me. It wasn't like I came at it from I already had a career as a public speaker or or whatever. So I was just coming in out of the cold. So it's all been quite a surprise to me. But the other day in in Cambridge. So this is what seems to happen to me, Mark. I get, I get, um, and that was the big, the, the big, uh, for me anyway, the speech that made my, for my credential, if you like, was the one that the guys filmed in Oxford back on the first Global Eye Tour where, where I was being heckled and from two sides and, and, um, and then in that heckling, so the kind of, the energy rose. Well, I, I recognized this again when I was in Cambridge and a few other places on tour with the guys recently. Um, sorry, my little boy's name, but then I was there. But, but with that, I realized that it actually takes something to almost kind of hit the switch. And then I switch into like, boom, I'm going to, and, 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 and while I was busy delivering in Cambridge and it lasted quite a while, a guy came up to me and said, Hey man, are you an actor? Because you project your voice so well. Yeah. <laughs> I don't agree with what you're saying, but you are great at projecting your voice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you could you could do um, uh, again. Take this as a comment. You could do stage acting. There's a lot of people that can act, right? But the to to project your voice, you know, from the stage where there's no microphones, that's tough yeah. to do. 
And uh, yeah, your voice carries. <laughs> well, so. well, if I can confess that I had tried uh, amateur dramatics some years ago, you know, I kind of have, yeah, I enjoy singing. I enjoy singing. I have a half decent voice. And if I'm comfortable, you know, that, and one of my own, my own personal challenges in life has been to overcome this because I, I can sing, but when I get on the stage, I croak and oh. uh, kind of thing, you know, so, so it's like, a, that's been one of my, challenges in life is to overcome this sort of um a fear of that well doing. from what i can tell if you ever decide to take it up later uh it is that's all, it's all about repetition they any any singing coach they'll just it's like you know sing 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 to where it, it's kind of like a muscle memory thing to where you it's just instinctive you get up yeah. there as long as your voice is intact you know and let you know yeah. you're not on a, the end of a 90-day tour um, yeah. you, you know, you're just, you're just going through the motions really. And then you think, well, but I want to put something into it. It's like, yeah, that's not what they teach you. Yeah. They teach you to just keep singing until you could do it in your sleep. Like you could wake up from a bottle induced coma you know, in, the, <laughs> in the green room. It's like, you're on in three minutes. It's like, what? what? Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. Get out there. So, yeah. Well, speaking of that, there's uh, I see Alex is in the, in the chat actually. And he is the coachman. <laughs> so, so, uh, so it, it, by the way, Alex, if you didn't hear Mark saying, uh, he just wanted to give you a shout out and uh, enjoy your music. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, I love the fact that Flat Earth is so weird that our number one music guy is a, uh, a Brit <laughs> singing an Amer heavy American Western accent, but he lives in Spain. <laughs> it's just like what? Yeah, just and all... did, yeah, and he's doing a lot of growing his own, and you know he's he's yeah, he's, and actually he's been I've, I've learned a little bit more about him over the last week or so, and he's been doing um sort of free man journey and and liberating himself from some of the trying to liberate himself from some of the controls for, for more than ten years. So his conspiracy music guru thing, I think, goes predates flat Earth for him. You know, he was already quite. I have seen, you know, I'm I'm in a number anonymously in a number of um, truther community forums, and uh, I think it was the video uh, I told you so. That that went out everywhere because you know it wasn't um, uh, it wasn't part of the flat Earth album, but it, yeah. it was it was definitely truther community. It was is brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant that song, and you know, it, people treat it like an anthem, like any of the other big truth or anthems. It's uh, it's yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when I settle down, when I get a home, I'm going to write some stuff, and okay. hopefully, I'll get to sing it for me. But yeah. uh, no, absolutely. I, I for, so I mean, this brings me to my. Firstly, I want to say to people, I enjoy Mark's witty news review. He does it like a Monday, a Tuesday show. Yeah. Uh, with Cap uh, if you haven't heard of it, <laughs> you've also been <laughs> on Mars or something, but he does a show and I enjoy your witty kind of, because I don't have any news uh, in my life at all, you know, so so catching up with the news from you is, is sometimes something to look forward to. <laughs> I thought I'd mention that. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. The, the nutty world that we live in that doesn't make, <laughs> makes less and less sense every week. It makes less and less sense, but you know what, it, like a few years ago, Mark, I thought that it was all about to sort of implode on itself and it was we, we kind of run out of time yeah now i'm not so sure that it's that's that's what it is is that that that, that is being used as a way of frightening us into running around like i have done for the last few years trying to find ourselves a, a way to stay out of the shitstorm. Um, right. so what do you what's your take on you know the the years ahead and this the story ahead it's not unfolding quickly it, or, yeah it's it, it right now it's doom off um, there is, I mean, I saw the flow charts. I knew how it was supposed to go down. You know, I'm, I'm a big believer in empathy. I put myself in the other person's shoes. It's like, oh yeah, I, I see the plan. Seems pretty straightforward. It's going to work. Right. And, and at one point I was, I was pretty much rooting for it. It's like, oh, this is going to be fun to watch. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Europe's going to get thrown under the bus. Uh, yeah. Russia's going to you know, do their thing. Um, basically the, the short version was you implement the, a virus of unknown origin and then dole out 12 billion doses of whatever you're peddling out there and then you start a major uh international <laughs> conflict and you let that play out you took you turn it into a, a two-front massive uh, international conflict on, on two theaters yeah. um, one on the eastern side one on the western side and that's it you you, you let it play out 
and it didn't happen. Uh, for some reason, you know, people give the the powers that be, and you know, I call them the authority. If you want to name any particular group, you can. You want to call them the Illuminati or the the Vatican or the trilaterals, the, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. The they they we give them more credit than they actually have. They don't run absolutely everything, but they have serious influence on everything. So in in Russia's case, you know, I was fully expecting. You know, it's okay, okay, you're going to blow up a few Russian ships. The SAS are totally involved. <laughs> and the Green Berets on our side and some alphabet groups. England, I don't know how we convinced England to, to get so hands-on, but whatever. Yeah. And then, and you're thinking, okay, well, the Russia now has an excuse. They're going to start, you know, start pounding stuff. And they didn't. They treated it like, we don't have to do this. You know, it's like, you, you guys, you know, you want to... You, are, you guys want us to engage, but we don't have to. We're mm -hmm. fully self-contained over here. We're in a country that has nine time zones. <laughs> we have all everything we could ever want. Yeah, we're pretty boring, but we can have you know the rest of the world can 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 turn into cinders, and we'll still be fine. And yeah. and then they're like, okay, that's not working. And then they spin quickly over to um, the the, east, the eastern side with Taiwan, and that was supposed to happen. I mean, everyone expects like China's like Pelosi better not land over there. You guys stay off Taiwan. I mean, we you got to remember that that in the states, you remember the actor um, John Cena, for example, uh, the uh, the actor from um, Suicide Squad, and he was a wrestler and all this. He met. I mean, he just mentions how much power you know China has economically. He just mentions in passing that his new movie was going to show in the country of Taiwan. And China just freaking lost it. It's like, Taiwan's not a country. You must apologize. And he apologized in video speaking Mandarin. <laughs> right? Yeah. He apologized. An American, you know, American actor doing that. And so we're thinking, okay, Taiwan's going to happen. And it didn't. Mm -hmm. So now, there's long, long story short, both, both conflict areas have completely fizzled out. Yeah. And the narrative, which I try to remind people, is like the you and I and the people listening and uh, uh, all the other people that are part of our community, awake, intelligent, observant. But as you know from doing things on the street, there's a lot of mouth breathers out there, right? You know, people are just walking around, zombies, NPCs, what do you want to call them? Mm -hmm. And because of that, the narrative has to be very, very simple. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Yeah. And the narrative has fought now fallen apart. Yeah, China could invade Taiwan tomorrow, for example. Mm. America's not going to care. You have to give a reason for the Americans to care. It's like, yeah, they invaded Taiwan. Do do do. What's on TikTok? That's all. Mm. That's all they care about, right? Yeah. TikTok, a whole other thing we should talk about. Yeah. Uh, it's been helping because it's been helping flat Earth. Um, and then on the, on the Russian side, it's like, yeah, Russia invaded Ukraine, but. And I don't know what the education system is like over in, in England or Spain, for example. But over here, 90% of Americans don't know where Ukraine is. Or Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they could look it up, but they don't know. And even if they looked it up, they forget it two seconds later. So That's a uniquely American thing, by the way, just quickly. Because when I traveled across the States in 88, I, I met people who had never heard of South Africa. No. Hey, man, that's from South America. No, it's South Africa. Hey, you from France? You know that accent of yours? You from France? I got asked that. Um, so <laughs> no, you think, because America has got the unique one of the unique things of being it's like a whole world in one continent. So so people yeah. people on the East Coast would sort of say, oh, "I've never been to the West Coast, man. Tell me what it's like." You know, because I traveled oh, yeah. East Coast in that trip. Um, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I, America <laughs> Americans are blissfully ignorant <laughs> about a lot of things. A I lot, mean, even our even our own history. Absolutely our own history. It's like, do you know why we have a state called New Mexico? It's because we took it from old Mexico. Hey, and, and stuff like that. You know, we we you know, most of the Americans couldn't name all the states and capitals. Forget about capitals, they couldn't name all the states. Yeah. Not even close. I am close. Now, granted, there's 50 of them, and that is a lot. But you know, they you know, there's most, you know, you ask like a Gen Z or they couldn't even name 25 of them. Right. Could, couldn't even do that. So yeah. anyway. What's happening right now is the big, all that big hype that you were talking about. You know, it's like, oh yeah, you know, the world was gonna, you know, start collapsing, stopped, and now the narrative has fallen apart. To where you're gonna have to rebuild the narrative because 
you you got to give you know it's got to hit them personally until something happens directly to well hell you know you've heard me talk about it you know that um that spontaneous explosion outside of the uh the air force base you know in yeah. england right and yeah. the the news said, oh it was a fireworks depot really is that what it was is that why you moved all your fighter jets next to the civilian planes is that what happened um, it's Can not. I ask you? Go on, go on, Karen. Finish. The well, just, but let me end with this, which is, it's not basically, it's not a war until the media says it's a war, which is yeah. so weird. Yeah. So, anyway, go ahead. And it's not a pandemic until the media call it a pandemic. There you go. I, I was very much trying to point out to people in South Africa last year that their that their total death rate was five thousand higher than the year before on a number of five hundred. Forty-five thousand. So it's 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 an insignificant um, number. Oh yeah. Um, and then I try and say to people, hey, look, were you ever polled? Were you? Did the government ever ask you what uh, what you at what level of, 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 of increased unusual death would we want to shut everything down? We were never asked that question. And if you pose that to people, and they're like, uh, what does it matter? You know, we don't. It's it, and so one of the things about the Ukraine story was it felt to me like they were looking to get it because we were like goldfish was to get it out of our minds to get this whole thing of the pandemic out of our minds and give us something else to yes. worry about, you yes. know, and to think about and immediately not be going over because for me we should be going over gosh so you did all of this to us let's account for that let's see right. whether that was the right action to be taking i mean you could ask that question in, in week three let alone year two but uh, um, so, uh, you know, that was the one thing. And then I wanted to ask your view on then, because I've heard you talk about the Ukraine thing, and I understand that, you know, the, the never ending series of hobgoblins is how the world is managed and how they keep us under control. But right. um, w w if my, the, when I look at the world game, I see a game of risk and monopoly all into, into one. And when there's only one banker, there's only one controller of that game and right. and so when we were talking about secret societies and and so on does that not mean for me anyway that that there's a table at which the ukraine v russia thing is being agreed all right you guys are going to go tomorrow and then you know we'll then in a month's time we'll go off to the other side do you think that uh, i'm i'm kind of on the fence on that because Again, if I was to write this story, right, if I was sitting at the Illuminati table, right, mm -hmm. you'd want, the, you're absolutely right, which is the distraction of Ukraine came um, within, what, 48 hours after the U.S. pulled pulled the, the COVID mandates back. It's like, oh, we seem to be winding down. Oh, look, there's a war. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's like, what's over there? Yeah. And, and, and it worked for, for a while. Yeah. Sure, but it did. It gained almost. The problem was it gained almost no traction over here. There's nobody flying freaking blue and yellow flags over here. They're just there's not. a blue and yellow flag over the road in Spain, really? right over the road. Yeah, I could take my camera and show you the people. Well, over the road. okay, 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 but that's but they're that's, English, but they're English. Oh, good. They got the well, well, of course, <laughs> oh, of course, of course they are because because England is way more vested in this so than. Than other people i'm really surprised at that i mean they're yeah. they're really into it and it's like okay yeah. okay that's fine um but <laughs> but, my, but yeah, well, africa, i was in south sorry to interrupt you again but my yeah. i was in south africa still at the time when when all of that happened and my english friends were going you you're not going to believe this but we're at war with ukraine and in 24 hours we don't there is no more of this virus it's gone from the yeah. media yeah, all our headlines completely transformed over here. Yeah. And I remember looking, I, I, I called on it on, on the show on Tuesdays. I said, headlines are gone. It, you know, it's like, so we're, we're focused on Ukraine. But but the problem was there was no follow through on that. I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah, you can, you can create the distraction for a while. But if you pull back, which is now happening, now all the side effects and all the people that are, have, have virus, you know, injection regret, now mm. that's starting to come out, and you've got the stories. I'm sure you've seen them. You like the life insurance companies are getting hammered, absolutely oh, really? getting hammered out there because you know they their graphs are always super stable. They know exactly what's happening. They know yeah. exactly how the money you know comes and goes. Yeah. And now those are getting thrown all over the place. So the distractions are not working. There aren't any distractions right now. You can always tell because you, you look at our main news feeds. All the different, you know, like CNN and Fox and 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 ABC and NBC, they're all they're all running different headlines, 
they're all like, okay, let's just, you know, but to your point, I, I think that Russia, for whatever reason, is not obligated. Who knows? Maybe it's their history. Maybe it's their isolationist policy. Uh, but the, I do not think they may have a couple reps at the at the Illuminati table. But they don't have to, you know, they're they're under the impressions like, yeah, you can't force us to do anything. Remember, even though power perceived is power achieved, you still have to have the manpower. Let's say the Illuminati was really, really ticked off at Russia, right? What are you going to do to them? Exactly. How are you going to pull that off? You know, they're really, really, it's a big, big area. And as you know, going back to, I don't know, Napoleon, <laughs> or they were the only group that survived the uh the the nazi ground assault the only group and it wasn't pretty mm -hmm. you know they they burnt you know nazi germany just just wiped out huge swaths of russia but russia survived it yeah. so i don't think i don't think russia is necessarily uh obligated the way that other countries are at the illuminati table I, or it may hell maybe, maybe they don't even have a seat at all well, i i well, yes, at, at the highest level, you're absolutely right that there is an overarching game, but something yeah. went wrong. Yeah. Somebody changed their mind. I don't know what it was. I, I really like that um, way of looking at it. But my see, I have this um, sense that like when when America won World War II or the Europe, you know, the act, the, um, act the allies, allies. Won, <laughs> it won the World War II. The, 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 you know, for me, that could have all been a stage, we're going to go as far as this, and then we're not going to go any further. And my personal experience of that is, you know, I'm going to plug my book quickly, not that I'm yeah. trying to sell it, but Mark Sargent has a copy of my book. I hear and, it somewhere around here. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm sure it's on your coffee table. And, yeah. um, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, Prince Harry has a copy of my book, by the way. Really? I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, you see, back in 2015, before I started talking too much about Flat Earth, I was becoming quite um, well known in the military veteran circles because of my book and because of the battles we were in. No shit. I was nice. getting, yeah, the most pr prominent unit in South Africa in, invited me in 2015 to be their guest speaker at a black tie event. Um, so, uh, that, I won't go too far into that story, but but yeah. um, what, what happened after I published my book was a guy came to me and said, you know, your battles were being um, observed and and sort of monitored or agreed by the Americans, Russians, Cubans, Angolans, South Africans in a hotel room in Luanda. So when you guys went to battle, the place that you would have your battle would have already been agreed and there would be a... Um, a uh, you know, this is where we're going to meet. So, <clears throat> so it took me a, about a year to really <clears throat> stew on that. And then in that year, I'd also started uncovering 9-11 and all these other things. So I started to think, shit, is this really possible? Because we knew the CIA was on the ground. There was no doubt for us soldiers because we would see the Americans stinger missiles on the, on the Cuban, on the troops arms. Um, friends of mine have spoken to these guys on the ground. A pilot friend of mine, he said, I couldn't land my plane while the CIA plane was on the ground in, in the in theater. Um, I went to the British Tank Museum and spoke to the curator there and asked him to get a photo of, an, on, of me sitting on a Russian tank, similar to the type that we were fighting against. And, and in my conversation with him, he said, yeah, we were watching your battles back in 88, you know, but 87, because we were very interested in how the mechanized warfare was being unfolded and blah, blah, sure. blah, blah, blah. So, so it came. It struck me that my, if my tiny little insignificant Cold War battles down in Angola um, were being stage managed at some high level, and by the way, Mark, you know what happens to me on the third of October, which is why I sent my book on this third of October battle where we destroy a brigade called the Forty Seventh Brigade. It's a matter of military fact, and mm -hmm. and we we rolled over this two thousand unit, two thousand man unit, three squadrons of tanks. My squadron, my unit was much much smaller, and we pummeled them to non-existence. And and then for five days we were told to sit, sit still and do nothing. And all of us guys, we were so we were six weeks into battle action at that point, and all we wanted to do was push on and go. We're ready. We you know we've already taken losses in the weeks before. Um, we've had you know encounters with these units but on this day we smash them up and we hear that they're starting to take the other three brigades that are in theater they're starting to move them out of theater and we're like chase let's go let's go let's go five days they made us sit and on the fifth day my squadron which is 12 vehicles 36 guys we get delegated to go off on a separate little side mission yeah. 
and we have to leave at three in the morning and we get somehow we get lost and we we're still moving at about 7 30 and it's which is very late in the day for us to move in angola because the the russian planes had superiority and we were being bombed well at eight o'clock these two russian migs we were we we'd taken shelter under a tree or under a in a forest there was no way we were visible and 15 minutes later two migs fly directly over our, our head so close that we could see the the pilots mouths moving as they flew past us they they flew back around we didn't couldn't hear them this is how it works with these jets it's such low you can't actually hear them and then the next moment they're dropping 500 kilogram bombs on us and um yeah, that was most on the eighth of October, one of the most significant days of my life. But I think yeah. that my squadron was punished because what we'd done was we'd embarrassed the Cubans and the and the Russians. And you know, it's a, a little bit like like if you and I were sort of um, you know uh, mob bosses of two neighborhoods. We know, okay, our boys need to kind of meet up every now and again, and there's going to be a certain amount of rubbing. But we're not right. going to go too far. We're going right. to agree that it's, you know there's there's rules, and if you step over those rules, we've seen it in mafia movies. If you step over those rules you're going to have to pay a price. And right. I truly, truly believe, I won't go too much into this um, conspiracy theory of mine, but I right. truly, truly believe that that, that that that's what happened there and that when when certain events happen where they're like, wow, we couldn't get through there or whatever, for me, it was like we stopped on purpose. Same with the South African army about 10 years before I was there, they went up to Luanda. They were the, the, the armored corps that I was part of the, the soldiers used to talk about we were we were on the gates of Luanda, the, the capital of the city, and then we were told to stand away. And it's like so that was an intentional thing because uh, they they traveled hundred you know seven eight hundred miles through the country, and and they they beaten their way through there, and they were at the at the capital, and they're like, okay, now what? Well, we turn around because we've achieved the political objective. We we're actually not intending to right. take a new country and so on. We're just creating a story you know and yeah and yeah, yeah and and you're, you're absolutely right um that it's not a conspiracy it happens in the military all the time there's been some movies that have touched on it one of the ones that comes to mind was uh, a vietnam one a movie called um, hamburger hill if i'm not mistaken where they kept trying to take this stupid hill you know and and it, and it seemed to be just this focal point but it's like there's no geographical significance at all why are you keep you know hitting this hill and then waiting you know, it's what you said. That's that's the giveaway most of the time, which is yeah. the momentum's with you. You've got all everything you need to keep going, and then you're told to hold, or you're told to pull back. And it's like, and, and every, the soldiers immediately, instinctively, it's like, what? Why? Why? We're here. Let's do this. Let's do this right yeah. now. I mean, yeah. let's go even so far. Oh, good lord! There's how many examples? Um, the movie Patton, or one of his books. You know, one of Patton's books, mm -hmm. which was is not a big secret that after World War II. Patton's momentum was absolutely there. And he's like, you know what? Let's go into Russia right now and finish this. Let's just do it. It's like, what are you talking about? They're our allies. Doesn't matter. We, we can, you know, they're going to be, we'll have to deal with them later. Eventually, let's just yeah. end this now. And they wouldn't yeah. do it. Wouldn't even yeah. consider it. Um, yeah. It's. I, I, you're absolutely right. Micro and macro, it happens all the time. Hell, let's we'll use two quick examples. Um, the spy game happens in the spy world all the time where mm -hmm. some spy goes out of bounds he does something he shouldn't and he is either taken care of or there's a trade that's made kind of like the mob bosses thing it's like yeah yeah we know our guy did you know we're going to throw him to the wolves we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll compensate you for that yeah. um when it came to world war ii i think because there's only so much control you have i think nazi germany and there's a bunch of books that are on this uh got out of hand yeah. Meaning yeah. they got the momentum and they didn't stop. And they were rolling to the point where it took every, you know, the Pearl Harbor thing, you know, America had to get involved because of like, we were running, you know, you, everyone was running out on your side of ways to try to stop these guys. Yeah. And the punishment in the end was Germany was all but obliterated <laughs> because of that. It's like people, the, the stories of after they surrendered, they still kept hitting them. And it's mm -hmm. like, oh no, we're going to starve you out. We're going to, you, you guys are going to be paying compensation forever. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. In, it's, it is a conspiracy. The, it, there are things are orchestrated at low levels and high levels, and it's just pieces on the board. And uh, you know, unfortunately, it's compartmentalized, <laughs> so you don't get to know. But that Weird. thing you're talking about, the the fighters coming overhead, yeah, how'd they know you were there? 
right? Wow. You know, and and uh, oh, oh, hell, we blamed ourselves for years. By the way, we blamed ourselves. We were like, wow, we were traveling too late. We must have left some dust in there because it's very, very sandy there. We must have made a mistake. But now I'm like, no, no, no. I'll, I'll give you one bad. more. It's okay. fictional, but I, I got to mention this one because you'll, you'll you'll totally relate to this. Rewatch if you haven't remember the the Tom Clancy movie, uh, Clear and Present Danger. Yes which was they had a group of spe special ops guys running around the South American jungles, blowing up drug dealers. The drug dealers figured out it was Americans. They went to the American politicians and blackmailed them and said, S give us the location. We want these guys now. And these yeah. guys were cut off. You know, they're like, and they threw them. It's like, yep, your communications yeah. are down. We've given yeah. them your location. You're on your own. See ya. Yes, and it, was, and it was awful, but that's how it works sometimes. So that is how it works. And actually, when when it comes to like, let's just say, because there is a there is a hard bald, hard business nose kind of um, way of looking at all of this as a form of um, genocide, because um, you know, ten or say thirty million young men uh, in the world wars, for example, would have had hundreds of millions of great grandchildren by now. Um, and so those sure. great grandchildren never got a shot, and the the population of Europe, for example, would have been um, I oh, think yeah? a lot bigger. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah, don't forget. So, Sorry, go ahead. No, well, so I mean, because I'm not one who who I, I, I see our cities are overpopulated, but I've traveled it enough to know that there's also a lot of land that we're being concentrated in these cities. On purpose. Yeah, people talk about overpopulation. I'm kind of I'm kind of mixed because I can see where they're going. You know, over here, like in the western half of the United States, there are massive tracts of land, entire states that are are almost unpopulated. It's yeah. not the, the, from what I can tell, the world order, it wasn't the question of the sheer numbers. We, you could put 25, 30 billion people on this world. No problem. It's yeah. the rate of which they were growing that they weren't happy with. You know, the yeah. whole Georgia, by the way, the Georgia Guidestones, you want to think of how the narrative is gone. Georgia Guidestones are gone. Blow, oh, you know, bl blown mm -hmm. away and then the rubble was removed. It's like, okay, so what story are we going with now? <laughs> <laughs> because that's what people were focusing on that for a long time. You're not even rebuilding them. So, yeah. it, you know, was it lightning? Was it a missile? You know, who, who blow it up? But um, I, I got to mention, you're talking about the, the people that, that died in Europe. Because um, people will, will come to me, you know, over here in America, you know, wave the flag, go team. You know, we, we took World War II. It's like, yeah, fine. We lost, I think, 400,000 men in, in World War II and almost no civilians. That's the big key. Civilian deaths are almost non-existent, except for like Hawaii from Pearl Harbor. Right. Um, but wow. Russia, you know, and they they say, who won World War II? I go, Russia did, or the Soviet Union did. I go, they can't even count how many people they lost. It's somewhere between 22 and 27 million. And and a lot of civilians along those lines. They did every, for every American soldier that died, they lost 50. And so, yeah, you, you, when it comes to the, the genocide, I still believe that they're trying for, again, what we've heard about for years, the Great Reset, right? Mm -hmm. But the Great Reset is on hold right now. And, and I'm going to talk about this next week, which is you think you're going to get a, you're going to pull off a Great Reset with side effects and inflation? That, that's what you're, that's not going to do it. And, and I know, you know, you're, you're going to hear it. Uh, it it's going to happen in the UK and, and I don't know what's happening in Spain. That you know, the whole, oh, everyone's going to freeze in the winter, right? It's like, mm. no, no, they're not going to freeze. I, I, I'll give an example of this ne you know, on Tuesday. But if, yes, if it gets really cold and your roof is caved in and you don't have any windows, sure, you might freeze to death. But all anyone's going to do is they're going to bundle up and use space heaters and crap like that. No, you're not going to you're not going to wake up one day in an entire section, you know, city block of England, is, you know, <laughs> they're all huddling, you know, frozen in there. It's not going to no, happen. No. But there are there are I know. And these these media reports tend to kind of make you think that that's going to affect me and we're all in fear. And that's the way yeah. that this thing kind of loves to, to keep us on the back foot. But um, what I do find is, and I know you, because I've listened to a few of your, your uh, shows with Karen recently, I yeah. know you're aware of how the fuel prices in the UK and in Europe have been Way up. very high. 
And so what tends to happen is you find with the older people, they are become more and more frugal and they have to tighten their belts a little bit more. And so they'll turn the heating down and, and maybe they do end up, you know, dying a little bit sooner. But here's a little, 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 a little gift to the government. And that is that because the fuel prices are so high, they are now gifting people because, you know, in the UK, they do give a lot of money out to people. In the end. And they're now giving people an, an extra 200 pounds um, as an extra fuel bonus. Yeah, so 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 the government actually, you see, they're creating the problem, reaction, solution. So, oh, problem, the prices, thanks to Putin, now they're so high. Um, right. Reaction, we're upset and we're freezing to death because because that's when the media says that you're all going to freeze to death. And then, of course, people are writing their apologies. I'm freezing to death, you know, I need more money. And, oh, look, we've got you 200 pounds. So it's almost like re re um enforcing that need for daddy government to yeah. to be there to manage these super problems that you and i cannot manage because we don't speak to vladimir right well you, you know might what, do I, what, I, you know you spend time in russia well yeah no uh, i i haven't spoken to putin in what a couple of weeks at least <laughs> the, um uh, no, what I was, I was going to say, what, what, what Britain did, which we, the United States hasn't done yet, which I love is the old economic policy, you know, from the people standpoint, which is you turn to cash. And a lot of people don't remember back in the day before credit cards ruled the world, um, you had checks and you had cash. And when you started running low on money, you went to cash because you knew exactly how much money you had. You know, credit cards are ethereal. You know, you, you kind of know what your balance is, but not really. So let's spend it. When you have cash on the table, it's like, no, no, that's what we have. And you, you know, you budget way more efficiently when you had cash. And so Britons inst instinctively started withdrawing cash, uh, you know, out of the bank because it's like, this is how we're going to budget. Um, mm -hmm. Americans haven't had to do that for, for quite some time. And yeah, we do it in some neighborhoods. But uh, the fact that you as a country started doing that, it's like, oh, yeah, great. And it helps, you know, pull you guys out of the, the credit card system a little bit. So yeah. I, I really enjoyed that part. I, I think Britain's got more of a handle on it than than um, than people give them credit for. You know, it, you know the, the the media hype. It's like, oh, Britain, England's gonna freeze, Germany's gonna freeze. Like, no, no, I don't think so. In fact, in Spain, is, what, did the temperatures even? Do they have winter in Spain? <laughs> well, I'm actually only, only visiting Spain for a few oh, okay. Weeks, so but no, but do they have winter in Spain? Does anybody know? There is a winter, and it was what Alex Michael was telling me last night. It was uh, you get February and March; they get two months of cold and, and wet, but it's not super cold. And, right. I mean, obviously, Spain has got mountains that has snow, and um, Portugal too, and so on. And so they do have areas that get cold in the winter. But right now, and they have, a, but they have a really long summer. Um, nice. But here's, a, here's a little nugget you might find interesting, Mark, and that is that if you go into the petrol station here in Spain and, and pay in cash. They give you twelve percent discount. I, I went in the other day because we were getting some, we really? were getting some cash by by a pal, and he and so I, I paid in cash, and the lady gave me money back. I'm like, what? what? What's got? Because I couldn't speak the lingo. She was like, oh, right, right, right. And I get I get an extra sort of five liters, or because I bought a certain amount of liters, and or and and it's like, what's going on? So the second time I went in and I paid cash, I'm like. Shit, I'm getting money back, cash back every time for paying in, in, in cash. Twelve percent? God, we uh, even on our best days, we maybe give four, maybe, <laughs> maybe. I well, I, I mean, for me, it's a surprise that they're incentivizing cash, given that that within the UK, you know, they're disincentivizing cash everywhere that they can. You know, they wow. Can on the buses without. That's food. really. I did not know that. I got to look that up. That's that's one of those hidden things that the media, yeah, absolutely did not pick up on. That's great. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I know. I, I'm, I've got to make sure because I will be driving out of Spain uh, in the not too distant future. I'll just tell you quickly, uh, not meaning, to tell my, but but I was um, after that tour we did. I was offered some accommodation with an old work friend in France, and um, so I went and spent a couple of weeks there. And, He's a real normie. I used to work for the government, and he's still very much in that normie kind of main mindset. So it was hard. But um, yeah. so after that was over, um, I was like, "Where are we going to go next?" And um, an old activist friend here in Spain uh, contacted him, and and he happens to live down in this area. And long story short, we end up being here, and it's only a twenty-five minutes from the conspiracy music guru, which is why we've ended up having it. Oh, nice! Together, you know. That's really, really um, cool. Yeah, but turning around from this, because we are going to, you know, we haven't, you know, without a, without a job and without, you know, 
paying the rent has always has been a challenge the last few years. But um, what I had planned to do, I'll tell you this little secret, Owen, um, is uh, I'm trying to arrange to go and visit Martin Kenny's place in Pineal uh, in Portugal, uh, oh. just to drive through. And I'm trying to talk. I'm trying to talk Alex Michael into coming with me. Uh, <laughs> Because I just want to get him around the campfire there and 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 do some music with them. Uh, oh, that'd be Mark. cool. I think it'd be nice. You know, I mean, I'm not. Uh, I'm not obviously. Um, you know. Uh, you know, I'm not looking to join the, the commune, but I do admire what they're doing, and I, I think that they need a little bit of um, kudos for their their endeavor. You know, and uh, sure, so I swing by that way if I can. Sure, so I thought I'd share that with you. Uh, I only came up with the idea yesterday, actually, when 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 uh, Alex was here. So, uh, oh no, I'm, I'm working on him, softening up. Um, but actually, speaking of activism, have you um, have you got any ideas going forward? Because yeah, I when you know we obviously had the two year kind of um, interruption in what we were doing, and yeah. uh, I know you were flying high, and then I've heard you say a few times how that sort of harpooned. Uh, a lot of things that were going on for you. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and so, uh, you know, Jason and Harry, um, uh, Globe, John Smith Globeli, had organized this um, this little tour uh, recently, and it was great to get back in the, the saddle there in, in the UK. Um, but I wasn't overwhelmed by um, the growth in uh, activism interest uh, in the, generally in the Flat Earth community. Right. Pardon me. Um, and I'm not saying that the flat Earth community. Well, I'm not suggesting the flat Earth community isn't growing because, of course, it, it is. And uh, oh yeah, 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 no doubt was, about that. It, it was yeah, it was doing it quietly. What happened was when people, especially, I can't, I can't speak necessarily for other countries, but I can tell you what happened here, which was when you forced people into their homes and into streaming services. They weren't just doing streaming services. They were they were going on the internet a lot, just a lot more. And they a lot of new people went down rabbit holes. But they did it on their own quietly. You know, they they weren't because they couldn't go outside. It was you know we we created a whole new group of truthers that were almost always in the closet because they they were forced in the closet in the first place. It was like okay, you can watch all the go down the all the rabbit holes you want. You still can't go outside, and you still can't go to restaurants, and you still can't travel. Yeah. And so as it started opening up, uh, and we're in that stage right now, we're two and a half years later. Uh, now that we're you know getting out and about, these people are starting to mingle and and, and run into each other a lot more. And uh, we're it's it's inter it's we're in this weird state of you know uh, what are you going to call it um, that that floaty feeling where no one knows exactly where where we're going. Yeah right mm. now because mm. up until now i mean you you it's hard to describe we're kind of in no uh, uncharted territory over here yeah. meaning you've got a whole depending on what generation you know because i'm gen x and then uh, you have um, millennials and then gen zers and their priorities have completely changed you know they're they're not really working they don't want to work they don't you know the the, the tick L let me throw this at you real quick which is the me social media is sort of changed in a way. Old tricks are the best tricks. So it's weird now watching because you know TikTok's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. Watching the kids that have taken YouTube videos, converted them to TikTok, doing commentaries, and then putting it back up on YouTube. Oh, wow. So it's like I'm watching some of my even some of my stuff or other people's stuff where there's you know kids commenting on flat Earth stuff. In fact, well, let's say this: When I type in "flat Earth" into like YouTube, and I I click on uh, upload date, you know, see what's the most recent. Mm -hmm. That is really really grown, because now, yeah, the intention span has shrunk down to goldfish status, but they're still getting the message out there. Sometimes it's wrong, you know. The you know, if you if you try to explain you know flat Earth to somebody in two minutes, how much can you really get out there? And they're yeah. they're hitting rapid fire, but that's where that's where we kind of are right now. Um, the the street activism. The only reason it slowed down is because no one, people were afraid to go out on the streets. Mm -hmm. um, I think I told you I traveled a couple of months ago to to a meetup, and for the most part, the, the airports uh, over here anyway, seventy five percent aren't wearing masks. But you can tell that the twenty five percent that are, they're never taking them off. They they are they are they are masked up at least during travel for life. 
the, they don't even care if the, the administration's changed, right? The administration says, oh, yeah, everything's pulled back. Trump's not in office anymore. Blah, blah, blah. And they don't care. So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I I actually had a, a chap, a, a fellow write to me a little while ago, a month ago, uh, so an American, I think, lad, and he said, I took one of your videos and clipped it into this two-minute thing, and it got 30,000 views on, on, on TikTok, which for sure. me is which is it's huge it's like oh nice ones so i thought oh well what i'll do is i'll take a video and put it on tiktok a flat earth video and put it on tiktok i don't know if it's had any views to be honest with you <laughs> <laughs> but, but that, but that, yeah that's what they're, they've done um tiktok drives me nuts because one you have to shoot in portrait you know it's it's default portrait you know because it's on it's on your phone and it's really really short and well, most of the tiktok stuff is out there is kids lip syncing to songs that's really that's really all it is and and i've i've watched you know because ironically they make compilations of tiktok videos and put them on youtube right and so i've, I've scanned the memes it's like oh, what are the kids into and there are a bunch of, of flat earth things that are coming out which is which is wonderful um and over here you know the the athletes you know that some of the best of breed athletes have have really gotten into it again you know, Ky Kyrie's still doing it. Aaron Rodgers, uh, American football, uh, Mike Tyson. The, you know, the fact, but the attention span drives me nuts. So, like, you probably heard last week, Shaquille O'Neal is back into Flat Earth, right? We right. say they're back into Flat Earth, but the media is treating it like it's brand new. It was like, that was like four years ago. And, and you got, yeah. but because the turnover rate is so high in media, in, yeah. in terms of staffing, there are kids like, do you know Shaq's into Flat Earth? It's like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, we know. We know he's in a flat earth, but the sponsors aren't dropping him this time around. Whatever. Yeah. So you think it's going to... Oh, wow. Awesome Austin says 1.7 billion views for flat earth on TikTok. 1.7 billion views for flat earth. Oh, yeah. It wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me. No, we're, we're, we're everywhere now. We have saturated... It, what's great about the flat earth community now is we had so much content generated up until this point that whatever social media platform comes out we're automatically thrown in there because yeah. nobody from ours and i that's one of my first lines i put in the you probably see in the description box of every video i make i go my videos are free for you to use and do whatever the hell you want with and the mm -hmm. same thing with i find me a flat earther that's copyright striking people ever for anything it's like oh yeah you want to use my videos go ahead yeah have yeah, fun you know, go to go to town i mean uh alex <laughs> alex get a kick out of this he um I've used his videos. I, I don't know how many are out there currently because I have to delete the meetups after they're gone. But uh, I, I've used his song so many times. I think he could single-handedly destroy my channel by just saying, <laughs> by just saying, copyright strike. Bam, 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 bam. He could. He's like one of the few guys that could do it <coughs> solo. Yeah. yeah. No, I think he would probably say, "I'm grateful that Mark's getting giving me some airtime for my tunes." <laughs> Yeah. it's it's again it's a cool thing and i was again i was so glad to meet him and and um it, we're, we're, lucky, we're lucky to have him you yeah. know something like that because again it's the illusion <clears throat> oh yeah he's the, this american red you know redneck singer country singer and he's not <laughs> he's not even yeah. close so yeah i, I yeah. love him. There he is. he's having a good laugh at, at us so that's all good um <laughs> Yeah, no, I, and, and long may I continue. Um, I just want to quickly say hello to a few people, actually, uh, in the chat, if you don't mind. Peter Feltham, hi. Awesome, Austin. Nice to see you, bro. The Jolly Man. Rasta Bear, conspiracy music guru, of course. Uh, Joe Mama, Rasta Bear, thanks very much for coming by, you guys. Uh, Voynich, nice to see you. Um, Squirrel Sniper, <clears throat> my friend, who I've spent some time with as well. Gibby Shake. And uh, let's see, Karen B. Oh, nice. Oh, Karen B's in there, yeah. Karen B, oh, she cool. was here. Oh, she's here right now, but she was. Um, oh. and I'm actually having a chit chat with her on Wednesday, so I uh, hopefully don't you're not going to exhaust her too much on Tuesday. But I'm having a chat. With who, her. who would have thought she would have become the queen of flat earth when mm -hmm. I when I when I met her uh at the conference, the, the very first conference that was part of the documentary back in 2017 in Raleigh. Uh, you know, she's super quiet back then. Super really? quiet. I mean, it, it was, I, I almost knew nothing about her. She was the strong silence type in the, in the corner, you know, in her, in her jet black hair. And, and it's like, 
okay. And the next thing you know, you know, she's she's fully yeah. inked up. She's yeah. he's yelling at people, and, and it's it's awesome. And the fact that she oh, is, yeah. is basically on her the own. Ink is, the ink has come since Flat Earth, or, or it was actually, I she was tattooed before. I couldn't tell because I, you know, she wasn't showing that much skin. I see, <laughs> so, I see, I get you. Yeah, yeah, it was probably there, but now she's like, oh, I don't give. A well, shit. I, I know that she's gotten a lot more sense, but, uh, but no, the, the fact that you know, women in flat Earth, it's, it's a tall, it's a tall order, just because you know the internet is still a dicey proposition for a lot of women, especially if you're attractive. Yeah. And uh, I mean, attractive women ugh, it, on the internet, it's, it's just troll. It's just troll bait for the most, for the most part. And so mm. she, she's been really good at, she has, she has thick skin. Uh, mm. other, you know, others, it's like, look, you've heard me say this many times, which is if you want to get into flat earth or if you want to start making content, the first thing you have to understand is to check your ego at the door because mm. people the the trolls, and it's nothing personal. The trolls will attack you just because you're out there. You know, I, I don't even look at them as human anymore. I call them NPCs. They're just, you know, they're not even there. It's like, oh, yeah, by the way, before you get upset at whatever that troll posted, look at his channel. Do they have any subs? Do they have any content? You know, how long has the channel been around? No, they're just there to make, you know, people upset. So yeah. Yeah, Karen, it's part of the journey. And sorry, Karen, and Karen's done really well at that. So yeah, yeah, Karen's yeah. done really well. She she says what? She says, her, what's her quote? Uh, I eat trolls' souls. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> Cool. No, and you've got to put them in their right place, you know, because, um, yeah, we need to be at the armor of God. That's yeah. The armor of God, you know? Yeah. And, and for the most part that we've done very well against the trolls, because there's what I, what I try to remind them every time is like, look, you want to troll me? You know, I, I say, be a better troll, make a video that's actually anti flat earth. And, and I mean that when I say that, you know, as much as people hate like professor Dave and Simon Dan and guys like that, it's like, no, we should have a thousand more of those guys out there because the more high level trolls, even if they buy subs, the more engaged, you know, other people will be it's like, oh, it's like, oh, I should hate Flat Earth because these guys said so. It's like, yeah, great. Go ahead and try. We'll still and not only that. Well, and not only that, because they hate Flat Earth so much, they will talk about it loudly in the in the bar tonight, in the pub. And, yep. and so so what these guys are doing is fueling that anti Flat Earth, if you like, movement. Oh, yeah, yeah. And because it seems to me, and I'm sure you've probably had a similar, you may have had a similar journey to me, is that you've presented all of this information to to the people you care about around you, and and to a large extent, it, it's fallen on deaf ears and it's been rejected and so on. So, so I, I, the, the uncomfortable reality is is that the majority of people in the world are not necessarily ever in this incarnation, in this time, or in this consciousness level, whatever, are even going to hear that. So, so I'm trying to disinvest myself from needing everybody to be on side and needing everybody oh, yeah. to treat me nicely because I'm trying to do something good. P producers will tell you, and I, I, I will say this, I learned a lot from the field producers over the years, which is they, they say it does not matter, absolutely does not matter whether your audience loves or hates the topic mm -hmm. as long as they're talking about it. And is because it, the, the worst thing ever would be if they're ambiguous. It's like, yeah, whatever. And then they move on to whatever the, the next yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if yeah. they, in fact, they, it's amazing. They say, look at, look at how soap operas work and other shows that like over here, there's a, there's a show, I think in Britain, it was called house of es Essex, something like that. It was, um, it was like a reality television show. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Over here, it's called Jersey shore. Yeah, and it's just a bunch of freaking idiots in a house doing the dumbest things. And the well, the point is, it's all scripted. You know, you have characters that are that are absolutely going to be the the antagonist. They're going to be the villain. And the same thing, why things work in soap operas. You you want you love to hate the villain. And yeah. so flat earth, it was one of the reasons why um, we were close. We were so close to uh, getting on a, a show called um, Amazing Race, and. The, the and we had a couple guys who were going to get cast for that and i pitched the 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 idea to the producers they said i go do not make us win you know this thing i go you know there's there's first place second place third place and then the others you know don't even make it to the finish line i go first place gets like a million bucks i said yeah don't make us the the winners what you want is you want to make us the villains because it was going to be an all internet cast i go everyone hates flat earth we're the most polarizing thing 
people will root for us to lose at the end. If we come in third, it doesn't matter. As long as we're up on the podium, we win. Because yeah. you know, we we got the press for this, and unfortunately, it didn't pan out because the um, uh, most of the internet people weren't willing. You probably didn't know this, but when you shoot reality television shows like that, um, you are you're basically under lockdown, meaning you are not allowed on the internet for at least a month. I mean, not on the internet at all. No, nothing. No emails. No nothing. And uh, because they don't want people coming in, they don't even want you to give away your location. They definitely don't want you taking TikTok videos from where you are. And uh, none of those, you know, people like PewDiePie and the, the Paul brothers and stuff like, you know, and, and um, Shane Dawson, they, they wouldn't do it. It's like, look, I can't be off the internet for a month. I, that, I get paid for being on the internet. And, you know, how much are you going to compensate me if they wouldn't do it? So, sorry. A little side note. Excellent. Well, um, uh, I was, I was, um, the, you, I, what came to my mind a moment ago was, um, you walking out of that conference that, um, <clears throat> Logan Paul was going to be Denver. Uh, yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, in hindsight, uh, I think, you know, uh, you know, credit to you. Uh, in fact, in fact, that was when you met, when you met Alex and, um, Stellion. Uh, Mark yeah. I, I was, I was there a couple days before I walked out. Um, and my vindication came two ways. One was, popular science magazine the the lady that wrote who who interviewed me before i left right uh she actually said in the last paragraph of the article it turns out mark Sargent was right when it's like eh, that's all i needed but the other thing was was when logan paul was talking about it after the fact with his buddy as like yeah dude you, you trolled the whole you know called conference you know almost never well except for that mark Sargent guy and it's like <laughs> yeah absolutely and that was the point that was the point. I did not want, I just took the bullet in this case. It's like, I couldn't let that kid troll the whole conference. I mean, I, I, you know, I sat down with a bunch of the speakers beforehand and I said, look, I didn't tell him I was leaving. I just said, look, you can't let this, you can't let this guy in here. He's absolutely a pariah. He's a blight on the internet. And they, they, it, it was just, it was because they didn't know who he was. That's the only reason it didn't resonate. They said, sorry, you know, we, we appreciate your, your enthusiasm, but we don't even know who this guy is. And it's like, Ugh. so when I left, uh, it was a statement more than anything. And I was so glad, so glad I left because he trolled the, the, it, hurt. I, I wish he would have made his little, you know, the documentary of all documentaries. It was only like an hour long. It was basically just a troll video. I wish he would have released it like immediately, but he waited three months. So I was in limbo for three months waiting to be validated. And meanwhile, people was like, oh, you know, you, you know, pussed out. You, you, should have, you shouldn't have left. It's like you abandoned people. And Patricia was so angry because <laughs> I didn't tell anybody. I yes. just I just freaking walked. Well, I couldn't because you know how that you know, the, the Flyers community is so strong that it would have turned into a big intervention. I would they, they would have taken my keys. Yeah. They would have like barricaded my hotel room. It's like you're not going anywhere. I like, get on stage, dance, monkey. And it's like all right. They didn't understand what you you could see, but no. What, did that, he, he's he, yeah no. The the Paul brothers uh, learned how to again. They learned the polarizing aspect of the internet, which was mm -hmm. even if they hate you, you know you're still going to get views. We'll push it as far as we can, and even then, too far. But they don't. They do not care. They do not care. They, you know, they'll go. You know, to I remember they like go out. One of their hooks once they got some money was they would go to other countries and like break as many rules and taboos as they could without getting arrested. And yeah. that was that was their thing. But now, and now, sorry, let me end on this, which is they would they did the same thing. Finally, they did the same thing to boxing over here. Which was, you know, boxing has never exactly been a pure sport, right? People have thrown fights before, you know, a lot. But what they were so overt about it, they would hire, they would just give money to like ex athletes and say, hey, how would you like to do an exhibition match, right? And then they would pay them to lose. And so, like, Jake Paul was like five and oh, and, and it's like, it's not sanctioned. There's no, it's not, uh, but, and, but these guys would lose and, and they'd sell pay per view tickets and all this, like, and no one got it. And the, and the kid, whoever the kid, you know, their fans kept buying the pay per view every time. It's like, you didn't get it. And, you know, of course they're going to win. They paying them to lose a lot of money. You know, even most of the gate in some cases. Oh, yeah, we're going to pay them 300,000, 400,000 to lose. And whatever, man. 
anyway, that that um, that event, like from looking from the outside, it felt to me. Uh, now I think about it, that your relationship with um, with Patricia changed um, after that. Like I don't yeah. think you were doing work together after that. Would, would that be no, right? we you know we had a break for a while. Um, the big thing was she felt, and I don't mind saying this, uh, she felt that because we were as close as we were that it was a betrayal to not tell her on the way out and the other thing was her big thing was the award show right you know we we had the segments and we rehearsed stuff and she had to get a fill in i mean and the her, the, the fill in for me was rick hummer come on the, the guy can MC anything he, he's great but she was really upset about that uh and then that was the kind of the beginning of other things then you know then i, I don't remember if it was before or after i think it was before when she moved yeah that was before she she had moved to england for a while to live with antonio and uh and that didn't pan out very well obviously so and i'm 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 a little disappointed that she never came back because yeah. because i mean yeah she's done a few videos but i always will remember you know when we were out at uh, a meetup in Los Angeles, and there was uh, we were there were certain God, we were so hot at the time. There were um, National Geographic had exclusive rights to me for that meetup. You know and that's that shows you where we were. They were the only ones that were allowed to talk to me, and CBS News was looking for somebody. And Jaron had flaked out and not shown up at the meetup, and so they get, CBS News comes to me and says, um, "Well, we need someone else to talk to, right?" And I immediately point to Rob Skiba because Rob Skiba's right there. I can see that guy being mobbed by all those people. That's the guy you want to talk to, and and they look him up and they go, "No, nah, he's too churchy." Who else you got? And I go, well, "How about Patricia?" Right? And and they sat her down, and she was so bulletproof. You know, she gave this forty minute interview, and they were trying to throw her. You know, on a, just sitting at a picnic table, her and, and the guy, and just you know, she was boom, 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 boom. And when she was done, uh, I remember, you know, it went on online and it, it got like, I don't know, a million, a million views very quickly. And CBS, for whatever reason, their audience is generally older. Some of the CBS, you know, they, some older audience members wrote in and said, yeah, we, we don't even think you should address this topic. And they pulled it down. I still have it on my channel, but it was, it was awesome. It was really, it was one of her finest moments ever. So. Yeah, she is, um, you know, talented, and there was obviously there was like a whole lot of, it was in those days like a little bit of, um, what's the word, tattle and, you know, stuff that fluff and what have you. But you know, when I look back now, I think you know she was an asset or would be is very asset. much, and uh, very that's much. Hard to where she'd gotten to, and um, you know why she isn't um, finding her way back, and I hope she well, does. I, Sorry. The, the, uh, I hope she does too. Uh, in the end, though, it was the there was the thin skin that got to her, and and I you probably heard this a bunch of times, which is, I you know I told her right off the bat when I started learning that she was reading all the comments, all of them, and not only mm -hmm. that but sanitizing them, you know, to where she would only you know if she saw a negative comment in any of the video, she would wipe it out, and yeah. uh, I said, yeah, that was, that was true. What Karen's saying there. Uh, because she was so camera ready. I uh, mm -hmm. sorry, side, side note there was a screen test that she and I did, uh, for a group up in San Francisco remotely, and the connection was horrible just horrible, you know, it, you know, it was really spotty. And uh, I remember talking to the she did hers first, and I did mine later. And sh and the guy was talking to me about connection issues. And I go, I go, um, so you're gonna, you're gonna redo Patricia's, right? He paused, he goes, What are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> he, goes, he goes even with horrible connection issues yeah. you know she is she is meant to be on camera um, absolutely absolutely meant to be on camera. and i think why people in in flat earth certainly like me coming in from the cold and you know being distrustful of, of so much right you know it's like wow this is such a polished performance you know so you 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 do ask yourself the question am i being you know am i being oh yeah presented with someone who's almost like a honey trap she's you know she's an attractive woman really well presented great yeah. background there and all that yeah and and it, and one of the weirdest backstories ever and as much as i i i tried to defend her there were certain things i'm going yeah if if i was the cia writing a backstory i would never use whatever the hell she had because it was terrible 
absolutely yeah. terrible. I mean, a girl that that went into uh, basically, you know, I don't think she ever did homework. You know, one of those kids and, and you know, you, you heard those cliche stories where a woman, you know, girl, pretty girl would have the nerds carry their books, you know, home for school. Yeah. <laughs> she was that girl, right? And she never went to university. I was going, no, those girls, when they go to university, they become like the professor's assistants, right? And they never have to do anything. It's like they walk <laughs> freaking, they've got campus, you know, if they don't destroy the marriage of the professor. And she... She was, um, she went from high school straight into radio, you know, and it was like, what? It's like, why? She's not built for radio. I mean, yeah, she can speak, of course, no, no question. Yeah. But there isn't a producer out there that wouldn't walk into, you know, that studio and look at her and be like, yeah, you got to be the, at least the weather girl at the local station. We're, 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 you know, she was meant to be on camera. Never, ever happened. In fact, she, she mentioned it's like, oh yeah, I was never, never even solicited to do it. I'm going... Mm -hmm. That makes no sense whatsoever. Your story is terrible. Yeah. It's absolutely terrible. So, right. well, yeah. Well, I wish her well wherever she yeah, is. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've also lost a few uh, people who've been, you know, really influential in the yeah. movement. You know, Rob being yeah. one of them. Yeah, yeah. Lost, lost Rob, uh, yeah. lost Mike Helmick. Uh, I'm thinking of content creators. Uh, Mike Helmick, I've still got videos of his on my channel. Yeah. Uh, Antonio. And so, yeah, um, and our Canadian friend, Mac. Um, yeah, Mac. That was a weird one because I'm not trying to, I'm still trying to figure out that one. I almost think, and I don't want to be dark and sinister here. I almost think, because remember, he was Canadian. Yeah. And I think he was giving them enough trouble. And we were in that sort of that weird pandemic-y part where it's almost like, you know, if there was a list, if there was a list of people to go after in Canada. Now, in America, he wouldn't even have made the top 100 of people. It's like, yeah, maybe we can do without him. But up in Canada, he'd definitely be in the top 20. And, you know, so, died, yeah, died suddenly in his bathroom, and I'm pretty sure he didn't get the shot. So, anyway, but, yeah, yeah. we did lose a few. We weren't, we weren't completely bulletproof. Yeah, no, we weren't. <laughs> and, but, their work, but their work still lives on, which is great. Their work lives on, and I do like to, um, you know, remember them because they they all offered, they all did something, they all added, they all added their bit, and um, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, Rob, then, Rob's alone, his body of work is huge, and uh, his main yeah. website, testingtheglobe.com. As long as that thing's still up, I will still point people in that direction. Whenever. Yeah. Well, well, I actually had a, you know, I had, a, I was in the early days for me in Flat Earth, I was convicted by the Bible because um, as a child, I'd seen Flat Earth in the Bible. Um, so I used to tease the preachers and say, your books are out of date, you know, that you, you guys still see, you know, what God didn't know that we live on a globe. <laughs> I used to joke. <laughs> so, uh, so I, um, so I was very interested in the Bible again when I when I first came to Flat Earth because of that connection and Genesis and so on. Uh, so I listened to a lot of Rob and also Zen Garcia. Sure. Uh, really to, to, to get my stuff, you know, and, and, and I learned an awful lot from those guys. So much thanks to them. Yeah. But this is one of the things I wanted to ask you a little bit about, Mark, if you don't mind. Was, um, sure. With to do with religion and... You know, I tread carefully here because, you know, when I go to Speaker's Corner, I'm, I am talking to people who have a strong faith and a strong belief in a particular thing. It might be right. this religion or that. Um, typically, it's Islamic Muslim guys in, in a lot of a lot of Muslim guys in Speaker's Corner these days. But, yeah. um, you know, I've heard you say uh, over the interviews, where, you know, I think I've heard you say you're a Christian and then I've heard you say that you're, you're not a Christian. Is that something that you are clear on? Are you, you have a oh, no, 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 no. I, I don't think I've ever said I'm not a Christian. Um, I'm just, I was not allowed, I'm not as hardcore as Rob Skeeb, some of Rob Skeeb's circles. So mm -hmm. again, born, you know, raised in an evangelical Christian home, born again, uh, church wasn't just a Sunday thing, had youth group, had Bibles, you know, studies, uh, uh, summer camp vacation bible school went to camp malibu up in canada uh but at the same time i don't quote a lot of chapter and verse uh you know when, I, when i'm out there and so like i was there back in the hay our heyday before the pandemic thing there were in the united states there were flat earth christian conferences 
dedicated Flat Earth Christian conferences that I was not invited to. I was invited to one of the last ones, but they weren't going to pay my airfare. Uh, but I was early on. I was not invited to because I wasn't. Uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Didn't have. It wasn't wasn't conviction enough. You know, I, I wouldn't. I, if I couldn't quote chapter and verse and and lead prayer group, then you know, I I don't I rarely will I say grace at the table. You know, when if someone says anyone want to say grace, I generally don't I don't volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, uh, with the with the the whole flat Earth thing, I my my just overall sense of spirituality has has increased by uh, orders of magnitude because I understand it more. You know, it's it's one thing to to get involved with an organized religion, uh, especially Christianity, and you know, say the words and you you know the songs and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. really understand it. I mean, it, it, there's there's blind faith and educated faith, in in my opinion. And mm -hmm. this case, you know, I I be I left one and, and became the other. And when I became the other, you know, the the whole I for me. I will acknowledge, you've heard me do it a million times, I will acknowledge the other four major religious houses. Mm -hmm. Because why wouldn't I? I mean, have respect for those groups. It's like, look, they have as many people as you, they have as much money as you do. You know, they're just in different countries or, you know, a different geographical region. Mm -hmm. And so, whereas if you, you know, I, you know, I have hardcore Christian friends be like, no, 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 Christians go to heaven, everybody else burns. It's like, all right, I get it, <laughs> you know, but, but, and I try to remind them, I go, yeah, you realize there are other people that say the exact same thing about you to the letter. And from a different faith or from yeah, within your own faith. Yeah, from faith. And, and they're like, yeah. don't care. And I go, and I, it, again, I, I, there's only so much I'm going to argue with them, but at the same time, in the end, I say, look, it's, it's kind of like, uh, a horse race, right? In a, in a way, you're putting all your chips on, you know, on, on a bet. But in the end, I'm not trying to be glib when I say this, the first God that shows up wins. Okay? <laughs> so you better hope it's, yeah. it's the yeah. one you picked. Because if it's not, <laughs> if it's not, you're going to have a really bad day. Right, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I I mean, this is my, this is part of my difficulty is, is that then, you know, who do you pick? Because you're, you know, you generally pick the, the one that was given to you by your cultural soup, your family, your environment. Right, right, so, right, right, right. So, and, 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 so, so go on, go on. Go on. Let, let me throw in this one more thing. And I, I don't want to necessarily give more credit to the Masons, even though I've got a 32nd degree Mason hat sitting over here, which I'm going to raffle at the show, which is the, the Masons had an interesting concept, which was uh, they, they don't care this is not secret information. They don't care what which group you believe in as mm. long as you believe yeah. in something. They hate um, atheists. Yeah, you have to be a believer. You have to have a faith. Have to believe I in something. I know that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got to believe in, in you know, why. of course, they prefer, you know, Christianity, of course. But uh, but you they, you they want you to believe in a higher power. Uh, you know, as far as specifics, well... It's, it's up to you, but I I do believe still to this day. Again, even though I was raised uh, Christian, that uh, that all religions seem to have pieces of the same puzzle, which would make sense in in, in my in my book. I mean, come on, um, you, you know, um, the Genesis, Exodus, uh, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Isn't that like the the first five books of the Bible were, were ripped off from the, the Jewish side of things? And so, I mean, the, the, in fact, Judaism, um, Islam, and Christianity share a lot of the same stories. I mean, you know, this. well, I, I say to people that Islam is the is the grandchild of yeah. of Judaism, and and the child is Christianity, and they're all they're all Abrahamic. They're all, in fact, that's what the Muslims say to me. You know, you believe in Abraham, right? Don't you? So, you know, that's their. You know, there, there is a common thread for all of them, but the, yeah. the difficulty. I have with um, uh, religion is, that, and of course I've had a lot of encounters in, in Speaker's Corner with, with religion mm. uh, and throughout my life, of course, uh, is um, that, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, an, it's a dialectic, it's a, it's a choosing of, of one side or another, and of course your bias is based on your social environment generally. So, so what I see in the world is ongoing conflict to do with religion, 
we understand, I think we understand that religion was, has as part of its purpose, um, it was like a government, it was a form of control. It was perhaps, you know, ideally just, just like, how do we manage our society? How do we manage our village? How do we manage our town? Uh, mm -hmm. This is a good, let's bring out some rules, but now we've got to a point where it's Bible and and, and Quran and so on. Is the CIA uh, uh, men in black turning up? Are you? No, 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 I just heard a car. Go ahead, go ahead. You're good, you're good, you're good. You can give me five, five more minutes before the No, CIA. no, 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 you're fine, you're fine. <laughs> If you see me reaching for a rifle, you'll understand. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> and uh, we'll call the yeah. Anyway, so so what you know, and you know, I've always been one to talk a little bit out of out of turn, and I and I feel like in um, the world today, one of the biggest constraints on on our realization of our oneness, of our shared um, heritage, you know, heritage, our shared blood. Africans would say this to me a lot in South Africa last year. We have the same blood. You see, once I've been talking to them with, with my eyes for a few minutes, they're willing to soften up and they'll go, yeah, we have the same blood. You know? yeah. and, and and that's how I see us, is that we have the same blood no matter your caste or your religion or all of these sorts of things. So w what I've seen in Flat Earth is a continuation, if you like, of that same old world, globe world kind of setup where there's, but there's still that kind of camps to do with people who do who like this belief or go with that thing or whatever. And so this this year, you know, it behoves me to 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 do to endeavour, even though I don't want it to to to, to I, like I say to people in the street is that if I choose we all lose you know once I choose a team because the Muslims say you're nearly there man you're nearly a Muslim come join us right. but like if I choose that team then right. I'm unchoosing the guys next to me as well you know so so why would I want to be forced to choose that when I feel like I can stand with brother Muslim and Christian one arm and the other arm you know right 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 I I, so, I I think your blood, your your blood reference is very. I'm, I'm going to steal that, by the way, which is yeah. In the end, you're absolutely right. This isn't like a science fiction movies. You know the the eight blood types: uh, A, A, B, um, uh, A, B, A, B, and O, and then the negative versions. Everybody's got that. Is it's not like Islam's have a special blood type or Judaism has a, a special blood type or anything like that. You're right. Under the skin, but it's we're all the same. We all came from the same place. Uh, and and you're right in that you don't want to necessarily. I do, I definitely don't want to. <coughs> I'll choose a team, you know. I'll wear the team colors, but only because I was raised with it, mm. right? Uh, it it almost feels like sports analogies, doesn't it? <laughs> you know where, you know. But because if you do, if you pick the other team, you go to that stadium. Oh man, you're in trouble. Yeah. But but and, and actually, actually, well, actually, this because someone asked me last night at oh stadium. I, think ask me you know did you have to kill people and and you know what in war in battle and yeah. and you know once you're in that situation and you've chosen your team and you're like well, the bombs are raining so i'm going to stand with my christian brothers sure you know we we sang a song as in in sunday school onward christian soldiers marching on to war you know i don't know if you know that one onward christian soldiers oh, yes, marching you know, on. Yeah. You know one so is so is you know is that a british song by the way pardon me is that a british song um, well, I, yeah. I was in Sunday school in, in, in South Africa, but but we're very British there, you know, so I... I okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to look that up. Um, uh, so, um, so, you know, it's like, well, we're being prepared for war against who? Well, it's either against the Muslims or the Russians or I don't know. Uh, Christians are fought Christians. Um, uh, someone I know uh, is a... Um, uh, uh, what do they call them, Plymouth Brethren, which is a, a unique sect of Christianity here, I think in the UK, though they may have branches in, in, in America. And they also uh, think a little bit like the Jehovah's will take the 144,000 to mean 144,000 of my club, you know, the ones that come to my church, you know. And, and, so, and it's always that my church is better than your church. Where I grew up in South Africa, we had, you know, Christian, I was an Anglican, and down the road there was Presbyterian Methodist, and then Afrikaans church called uh, it doesn't matter. And um, and 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 I'm like, we never hang out with these guys, but we're all right. in the same club, you know. But no, no, they they do it like this, and they clap too much, and, and they do the, the other thing, and they don't do what we. Do. And so all I see is segmentation, and that segmentation, I think we might be carrying that into to to the flat Earth 
or we are. And 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 I just want to challenge. And you are one of the you know the, the godfathers of, of flat Earth. So I'm just it's great to have you here and to be able to kind of throw this on your, your table and say because I say to people by the way because because I had a, an argument not an argument I had a strong conversation with two young ladies in the street a little while ago doing activism and I haven't actually put it was a live video and I cancelled it straight away I haven't made it public because these two women wanted me to have a belief they wanted me to be they wanted to attack me, but because I was saying I'm not choosing a side, I'm not taking a religion, I'm not because they were Muslim. Oh, of course. And 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 my position against the the faith for them must, or the against the religion, must be because I'm I'm Christian. So I'm so I'm in the typical kind of I'm the Christian fighting against the Muslim kind of argument. I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to be choosing sides. I'm just offering you that if you were a Christian or a Muslim, I'd be saying the same thing to you. But you guys, the Christians or the Muslims, you go home tonight, you put your head on the pillow and go, I'm right and they're wrong. They're fine. You know, they're doomed because they're not believing what I believe. Right. And that's what we're all doing in our face. And that's so childish because it's like, shit, how can that be true? What kind of God would have created a situation where you needed the printing press and without it, you were going to be screwed. And if you were born in that part of the world, you were even more screwed. Yeah. Our, uh, it seems that human beings, our enthusiasm tends to get away with us. You know, yeah. uh, you're absolutely right. My peace-loving God is better than your peace-loving God, and yes. I kill you to make that point. Yes, <laughs> it's like it's like, wait, well, how did you make that jump? It's like, well, because you were so enthusiastic about it. Where is the, the where is the wall that you have? Where is the the backstop that you know that you have to, you have to quit? You know, as far yeah. as but there is none. No, because remember, religion is unchecked. The enthusiasm just builds and builds. And it's like, it's not enough that I'm yelling at you. Somebody get me a big blade, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and start hacking at you. Uh, and that's, I mean, same thing. Again, I don't want to necessarily mix sports analogies, but we'll talk about Flat Earth in a second, which is in sports analogies, same sort of thing. The enthusiasm in the crowd and you guys over on that side have it way more than us, right? American yeah. football, it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, we may throw beers at each other. But that's yeah. about as far as it goes. Over there, oh no, no soccer, football, your football, football. people just lose it, just freaking lose it, and that's that's over a silly game that well, is just well, well, yeah. In fact, if you go to a soccer football match here, you know there'll be horse p police with big horses, you know, yeah. sitting on their horses, making yeah, sure that people police. get yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And 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 you're right. In some ways, um, there is a lot of division inside of flat Earth. But we're lucky in that, in the end, and it, again, we have seen this in the conferences and the meetups. I mean, I don't know how many meetups I've been to or conferences, and that is the the ill will. I've never seen anyone in the lobby, granted, and, and this is even after a whole bunch of drinks. I've never seen anyone in the lobby come to blows over, you know, dome or no dome or, you know, the toroidal field versus not or how deep anything is or how far anything is. Because you know that they're like, all right, I I see what you're saying, but it's but it, it never I, I've never seen it get that far. Now, great, but yes, you're absolutely right. There is, of course, there's division out there, um, which is why I love the um, uh, the the Scottish Highlands reference, which is yeah, the Scottish Highlands they'll hack at each other all day until the English show up on the field, and then it's like, oh no no, we got we got a job to do. Right, and then everyone's like, "Okay, shake hands and let's go after the English." Uh, yes, but, but I use the same I use the same analogy, Mark, with the football or soccer, because you know you you see that here where there's two teams of two London teams or Everton and Manchester United, they're the same city, and they will go at each other. Yeah, Liverpool, they'll go at each other. But when Germany turns up, then they all put on their three lions English shirt and they're right. all on, oh, oh, "Let's go, boys." You know, and then it's like, come on, man. I used, yeah. to, so I used to joke, and I only, only realized that this had been planted in my brain by, by Ronald Reagan uh, when I started looking into the truth. But I used to say, yeah, imagine if we were invaded by aliens. You know, humans would finally realize that we, you know, we should come together under our common humanity. And then I realized when I started searching for myself that he'd said that. In, in the yeah, that was, a great, that was a great speech in the UN. That was pre-internet, so it didn't get nearly the press that it would have gotten now. And yeah, and that's a great point, which I'm, in fact, I was talking to a guy um, last night, some podcast, and I, I mentioned, I go, look, if you really, if, if, if the narrative wants to go in a completely different direction, that's what you do. Whether it's staged or not, if any 
civilization other than us, you know, the people with the other blood types mm -hmm. actually show up. Oh, yeah. Every, everybody would forget everything they're doing. It's like, okay, what's happening here? <laughs> you could be mm -hmm. literally be beating a guy, right? Just mm -hmm. going to blows. Well, you've seen this in movies, right? You know, people are just beating each other up in the street. And then all of a sudden, some shows up in the air and they're like, okay, yeah, we're not fighting anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're this. Down. I'm rooting for that. I really, really am. I am hoping that. I mean, I know it sounds silly and and uh, fantasy based, but it, that would be for me. That's my happy ending. Which yes. is because whoever it show up was the first question will be like, "All right, what does the world look like? Give it to me. What do you got? Throw a holographic map up so we can see this. So we can end this once for all." <laughs> And even then, if that happened, I'd look at the scientist, and I wouldn't, you know, be like, burn him. I'd be like, yeah. see? Yeah, I'd do my told you so dance, and yeah. then <laughs> and, and let him go on his way. So. Yeah. Well, maybe, and maybe it's from, from lands uh, further away or whatever. There, I'm sure there's going to be some fantastical things that are coming. I but hope so. I hope I so. so. And again, maybe that's why the narrative, maybe somebody made the choice. It's like, okay, we're not going to go with the the brutal slug, you know, World War Three, you know, and ending. Way we we're going to do the the other civilization ending. Uh, I, I think I think that's the way to go. Only because people say yo yo yo, you know, when they when they shut the internet off, I'm going they're never shutting the internet off. It is too big a tool to be used. I go, don't forget it. When the power goes out and the phones go dark, the narrative isn't there anymore. So why would you ever turn the lights out? I go, you got to and going john carpenter's movie they live they that he had to smash the tv receivers. yeah yeah like yeah just to break people out of the spell absolutely yeah if yeah if they turned yeah if they turn these little boxes off oh yeah, yeah they're uh no that's what i say to people you know we see i've seen in london in england uh, the development of the smart city the smart highway and all of these sorts of things are are preparing for a a thing to come they're not they're not about to kind of shut it all down and yeah without the network two yeah. or three days without the network people are running around like headless chickens and they go oh yeah yeah they yeah, yeah. They little, at least little, to go beat people up little side story for you really quick um uh over here in the military they they learned this fairly quickly which was when you went to boot camp right you had to put your phones and everything in a locker mm -hmm. and when you're standing at attention they noticed that the, the 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 kids were twitching a little bit, especially their right hand or left hand if they're left-handed. And they thought, honestly, again, this goes government logic. They thought there was a drug problem. They're going, oh my god, are these kids going through a withdrawal? What is what what drug is you know is on? It's out there. Turns out it wasn't the drug at all. It was the phones. And then after it took about a month, and after a month, anyone who was paying attention, the twitch went away. Uh, that shows you the the power of the power of that little little device. They're so used to doing this, yeah. Oh yeah, so used to doing this, they they couldn't not do it, even when it wasn't yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, it's like an instinctive action. Yeah, <laughs> their, their, finger, their fingers are constantly, you know, doing this, even when it's on their side. You know, it's like stand still. It's like okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, and and when you see it, if you seriously, if you're a drill sergeant and you're looking at this, and it's not just one person; it's like eight or nine people on your list. It's like. What yeah. the hell is happening here? Yeah. You know, are, you, are you guys doing this as a joke? What's happening? I only want to. I only want to make one more point, and then I'll let you go on your day. Okay. And that okay. is to do with. Um, well, back to back to. Well, firstly, uh, firstly, I've been meaning to say all, all, all the way through. Congratulations on 100k. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hey, Milestone. back to my channels even around. Thank you for that. <laughs> but yeah, no, no, no. Well done, and uh, yeah, good for you. Um, uh, but you know, just on the this does vex me a little bit and to do with the Christian um, thing is to do with why. See, when I went to to Sunday school, the most important message that I got is that Jesus died for you, and um, you know He is your savior. That's sure. probably, in a nutshell, I think the Christian you know, do no harm and love your neighbor and all that stuff. That, that exists in every other uh, faith, really, any, any other religion to love your neighbor, I think, pretty much. But, um, but this idea that Jesus died for your sins is the cornerstone of Christianity, in my yep. opinion. Yep. Now, now every, per, every truther that I've ever met 
really dislikes and has uh, antipathy towards the Jesuits. You know, that's like the worst possible brand of of of, of, of Catholicism. You know, right, right, right. And flailing and the boiling and so on. But but I say to people, look, the Jesuits society or is is the society for Jesus. You know, I think that's what it means, the society sure. for Jesus. And so is it not logical that the society of Jesus is about promoting, you know, Jesus as the savior? I mean, it would, it, you know, it would seem logical. They're the most powerful, apparently the most powerful group in, in, in that. And for all of these years, we've always been getting the exact same issues that, that um, you know, in my church, I was, I was not worthy to eat from the crumbs from under the table that we used to say that mantra every Sunday. We are not worthy but to, to eat from the crumbs from under your table as part of some liturgy or something that we used to do in the service. I was an altar boy, by the way. I carried the, the candle and I, I, oh, I wow. gave the the preacher. I was proper in there, man. I, I, you know, um, but so, so what, what, what do you feel about that? Is that this dude called the, 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 the Pope, who is a Jesuit, and I know he hasn't hasn't been for six hundred years, but the right. Jesuits working in the background appears to me. They're saying you must follow. We don't like we don't like the Jesuits uh, apparently, but we follow their core teaching if we're holding to Christianity. Does that? Wow, do that? I don't know if anyone's ever asked me that. Um, so it's a good question. Um, I don't know if I have an opinion, uh, an educated opinion on that one because. For me, the Jesuits were just another group that was accused of pulling the the as pulling a whole bunch of strings the, on the back end. Mm -hmm. um, the, in fact, it's it's weird because I up until you mentioned that just now, um, I haven't heard the blame game using the term Jesuits for oh, six eight months at least. Uh, what I, what I try to remind people is like when it comes to secret groups right groups that are blamed for a lot of stuff and and you ask anyone in the truth or community what your top 20 are in order of importance you're never gonna get the same list because mm. everyone's no one can agree on anything whether it's the yeah. Bilderbergs or the Rothschilds or CFR or the trilaterals yeah. the Masons the Jesuits uh the Illuminati just the overall Vatican um some Jewish cabal something like that so I don't know I, I don't know when it comes. I mean, it's possible. I mean, I've heard more negative stuff about the Jesuits than I have the positive, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Um, I've heard tons and tons of stuff about the Masons, mm -hmm. but at the same time, the uh, you know what? I, just because of you, I'm going to dig more into the Jesuit stuff. Just just mm -hmm. uh, just to see. I mean, you probably got more more info than I do on them, but. Yeah, I just no, no, I don't know that I do, and of course I've been. I, my time for researching is very limited when you're on the road, but right. But it's just a, just a, you know, like a, a sort of, you know, which I'm trying to help myself and obviously those I can inform uh, in the best way that I can, and of course I only want to do it, you know, with integrity, and and so. When I think about this and when I'm presented with the, why aren't you taking a badge? Why aren't you holding on to this religion and so right, on? Right, right, right you know, I need to have a cogent reasons why I feel like it's all part of the same capture. It's all part right. of the same thing, which is why we were talking about military earlier on that, you know, even though that there's these high level um, things that, that, you know, the Russians are genuinely pissed off with the Ukrainians or vice versa or whatever, there's all that. Right. At that level, that's what they're doing, but there may well be a level above that where they know, well, we're still, you know, pulling the strings of, where they're actually just pissed off at the SAS, probably. But go ahead. <laughs> Not to do with that ship or something. But yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, I just wonder. I'm just, you know, I'm just curious about that. I'm just almost trying to challenge people in a respectful way as much as I can about um, to to think about that because I've seen, you know, people in our community, if I can call it that, um, tearing at each other a bit. Right. Um, notably Russian vids, you know, recently ripped into some people because because they weren't holding his view of what religion. Um, yeah, Ru Russian. I, I got, I've got nothing against the guy personally, but yeah, he is a he is a cl classic version of if you're not with me, you're against me. 
yeah. type type thing. Um, let me let me throw one thing out as as far as the the Jesuits go. Part of me thinks that the Catholic Church and let's just say the Vatican, the Vatican wants the best of all worlds, right? From yeah. the from the Christian side, yes, you have Jesus, but on the on the Vatican side, it mostly focuses on Mary. However, yeah. the Jesuits is you know is more Jesus, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the Judaism is Moses, and then the Masons, you have Solomon. Uh, but I'm wondering, again, if the Vatican is, is trying to, kind of like a politician, is trying to cover as many demographics as they can. But in, I think in the process, for whatever reason, the Jesuits got the, the short end of the credibility stick. I'll, I'll look into it more, but they are bashed way more than they are praised. No, no question, especially in the truther community. Mm. They, they... I know, of course, what, what, what came, it was interesting to me, was that the current Jesuit uh, Pope he came in in very unusual circumstances because the previous guy was still alive and hadn't been in post very long and so right. on. And so it was, a, it, was a, it was an oddity at the time when he came in sort of without the previous Pope dying. So there was two Popes essentially alive, very unusual. And... Right. Um, and then and that he that he's a jesuit pope and now again this could be stuff that's really sort of fluffed up for the truth community to get us our, our knickers in a twist about but but you know for 600 odd years there hadn't been a jesuit the jesuits has been excluded from certain things bumped out oh. of certain countries because of their the way they're trying to influence things at the top table and so on and so forth and i hear stories of um, there being this in, this this ideal eventually to have like a, a one world religion um, and if that's true, then then of course it's going to probably be manufactured by organizations as powerful as that. Um, not that I can see it necessarily, but who knows? Uh, and then um, and so in a world in which the control of your own sovereign destiny yeah. has been usurped by government and by religion and by um, you know. Uh, elements of control of the system, mm -hmm. then I think we have to guard against the possibility that uh, these same great, you know, organizations that have these beautiful, incredible buildings that appear to have been built by people that can't build them today, yeah. you know, and they seem to be covering up the, you know, hiding part of that. I have to, I have to wonder whether, you know, the game of control is so, is so complete that, no matter which way we turn, there's always going to be some lever or lever of control that's in place. And and my journey of self-mastery, if you like, or the, the journey I'm trying to take of self-mastery is one in which God wrote the truth on my heart. And oh. I don't need a man's book. I, like I don't need I don't need to choose this book or or that book. I will read those books because I think they're, they're they've got incredible information and guidance on how we might be uh, better and, and how communities might structure themselves. Right. But really the the, 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 the the true essence of what's right and wrong exists within each of us. And I, I feel like we're meant to be self-masters, not needing a government or a medical system or a, I only refer to that because of the last two years, I think in this sure. time. Sure, sure, sure. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, but we don't need um, so much to rest on that because, as I said to you, if my blood is the same as yours, then it shouldn't matter what what books we've read in order to find our way to being good men with one another, treat each other with respect, and so on, um, um, honor and steal not, and you know, do those sorts of things. So, so that's why I feel like it's a subject worth talking about i don't really like to offend the religion people and oh, i know that in, in, in religion in religion you know there's there's so many people i've met who've gone no, but i have a much better version of the religion than, than you right. so it ends up being a bit of an ego tussle between people who've read more deeply and who've claimed to have understood it more and so on i'm like but God shouldn't demand for me to be a super brain that can sit for all these hours and read all of the stuff and know all of the stuff. I should have to, you know, it should be quite a simple way of, you and I should be able to work it out even if we'd never read a book. We should know how to treat each yep. other with respect. Agreed. Um, and that's where I'm at with that. So Cool. I, th cool. I thought I'd just offer that for... Um, yeah, I mean, this is what this lady Joe says here. Uh, religion about creating intermediary between us and God. For me, that's 
the key thing is that I feel like if I'm talking to God, whatever God is, I, I, I don't claim to have knowledge of that, but whatever God is, whatever the higher essence is, whatever it is, I feel like that relationship has to be direct. It doesn't mean I don't need someone else to kind of excuse the things that I've done wrong or, or, or you know, I, to have a guide or a mentor right. or something like that. Absolutely right. But yeah, yeah, you're right. You, on you, right? You, no, you're you're absolutely right. Uh, there there should be a direct relationship. It's almost like religion, and I'm not picking. Became sort of like the lawyers in the middle, mm -hmm. where they saw the need, and of course, every, every human being apparently has it, and religion saw the need for those individuals and stepped in between and tried to become again the the intermediary. And when you become that group, power corrupts, always has, and it gets twisted. It probably started out innocent enough, but like with anything, it becomes a bureaucracy, and then there's a lot of hand cooks in the kitchen, and it turns into you know something where you know from the outside it can be condemned in certain circles. Which is, but again, I still think that every religion has their points. You know, every every religion has their their strong suits. You know, except for like the fringe yeah. stuff. I'm not a big believer like Scientology and stuff like that. But yeah, no, and I think you know, in the main, people you meet in religion are genuinely trying to do the very best, and right. uh, you know, the, so on and so forth. So it's not to but, not to that. But at but the same you, time, sorry, uh, let me put this one more thing in here, which is don't forget that even though the Vatican, you know, the Catholic Church built a lot of things, they also created the Templars. And the Templars started out as just a reconnaissance mission that then, be, you know, developed into this big thing and started the Masonic Wars. Yeah. And started basically, you know, people forget it's like, you know, the whole conflict between France and England you know, was mostly the Masons in the background fighting under a, you know, a di different banner. But so what about this one thought? Right? Then if I, I the one thought that is that if we have um, lived through epochs where there have been there's been end times, Noah flood type events that have caused a, you know, a cataclysm or a sure. going away. Um, then, then my sense is that the people who run, who are that influential, know about that. And so, some of the, some of the reasons why they do what they do is because they know that the, that is still coming again and sure. in order to be prepared for that we need to take a particular thing this right. isn't a very popular thing to say but i sometimes say to people that you know is it possible that 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 if i was tim peak um and I, i'd been presented with some the the, the british um astronaut uh, well, fake, um if i was him was there something that he was told at some point that that would make him go oh shit no, 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 no. I don't think so. Not anymore. Um, which is compartmentalization has been has refined over the years. I believe the Apollo astronauts were told uh, why it's, it's, it's two things, you know, in the military, it's like, it's need need to know. And there's, you're given your mission and you're given the briefing on what you're going to do. So Tim, you're going to fake this. But he's it's above his pay grade to know why. Yeah. So no different than a, than a, a spy who's going to shoot somebody. You've seen it in the movies a million times. You're going to get this rifle. You're going to shoot through this bathroom window. You're going to hit that guy in a limo over there. You don't get to know the political intrigue behind it and the huge backstory and everything leading up to it. You get the guy in the limo. That's yeah. all there is. And it yeah. and it takes the emotion and every all the baggage out of it for you. Because, yes. you know, if you if you knew the entire backstory, you'd be like, well, maybe I don't want to shoot him. And they learned that with the, the Apollo astronauts. The Apollo astronauts, the American astronauts, were basket cases afterwards. Yes. Absolute for years and years, all the way to their deaths. Neil Armstrong so wanted to tell people, and he couldn't do it. So now what they do is they just hire Air Force guys, you know, Air Force officers. And they're usually colonels in some cases, you know, full bird in some cases, yeah. where they're like, yeah, you're going to fake this. And be like, yep. Totally got it. <laughs> and, and they don't want to know because yeah. deniability, it's kind of like um, uh, as long as you don't know for sure, as long as you don't have the debrief, you don't know. You can suspect all day long, but until the debrief is in front of you, what do you yeah. care? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to collect my paycheck. You, you, yeah. again, you may in the back of your head kind of know what's going on, but it's not going to crush you. So Tim Peake, why tell him? In fact, it would hurt things, sort of like telling Neil Tyson. Why yeah. tell Neil Tyson? 
You want him up on stage doing his song and dance and snappy, snappy banter. You want him doing that. You don't want him to think about it because you he he'd give it away. He'd be like on stage and you have this moment like, yeah, so <laughs> space. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> so, no, you don't want that enthusiasm to go away. So you want him yeah. to keep doing. So yeah. no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell him. Yeah, I can roll with that because, you know, which a lot of people say in the street is you, you think that all of these uh, uh, um, engineers and space satellite no. people are, are, are lying. No, 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 no. Of course not. They, they're Only the telemetry. Seriously, direct them to the movie Capricorn 1. Only the telemetry guys need to know because yeah. the telemetry guys, somebody's got to fake the data when whatever it is going up there. You know, telemetry is like, okay, where is this thing? Oh, it's 100 miles that way and it's this altitude and, you know, going south by southwest. Yeah. And those guys have to lie for you. But that's only a handful of guys. The rest yeah. of them, totally oblivious. Absolutely yeah. everything's doing, you know, they're standing at their terminals. When you see them cheering, they're absolutely legitimately cheering. They're ignorant, but, <laughs> but they're innocent. So, Excellent. Yeah. Well, Mark, I've had a really good time chatting with you today. Yeah. Nice to hours. talk to you again. Yeah. Um, I'll try not to make it so long. I would like to invite you back in. in yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I don't care. You can make it as long as you want. Who who do you have on, on next? Who's your next person, Karen? Yeah, I've got Karen. And then um, Sir, Sir Flat Earth David Weiss has um, has uh, has granted me an audience. Uh, <laughs> are you um, talking about granted you? He says yes to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he, yes to, he, he says yes to podcasts that are called I hate flat earth.com. <laughs> he does not care. <laughs> Granted, you know, David you know. The shield you know, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, he, he, yeah, he's, I love the fact he's going to go to flat Toberfest. He's not even speaking. He's just going to be in the audience. He thinks he's going to be left alone. He will not. Yeah. People will be badgering him constantly. Yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. constantly. So, uh, he's done great things with his uh, with his um, his app, and uh, he's yeah, he's irrepressible. I'm a little envious actually because I would I would love to get a little bit of that. Um, some of those. Uh, well, uh, don't don't uh, don't envy him too much. I you know I started looking. You know I was watching some of his early early stuff when he started doing this, and I know full well. See again, the reason why my my interviews are so you know innocent and, and light yeah. and stuff is because they call me. They want to talk yeah. to me, right? David has people calling these these podcasts. You want to talk about flat earth? If you hit that podcast on a bad day, or, or you know they've got a different view, it's like, oh yeah, I want to talk about flat earth. Get that guy on here, right? And then they will attack and attack, and it, wor it works great. He's got the thickest skin you could ever imagine. But yeah. no, no, there's some podcasts I have listened to. It's like, dude. <laughs> Would never yeah. want to. I'm not. I wouldn't want to trade places with him right now. I, I watched the Professor Dave one, and it made oh, me. Oh my god, me. the worst. Yeah, it was absolutely the worst. I am so glad I turned that down because it was. Yeah. I, I had no idea. A day, you know, I had no idea he that guy was an absolute. Oh, I, I, I don't want to use the yeah. adjectives. He's horrible. Yeah, He's absolutely horrible no, guy. Just, but but at the same time. He, at the same time, he generates interest and yeah, good. I wish we had more guys like him, but no one should talk to him. Yeah. So. Yeah, but it makes you when you go into his comments section and you see hundreds of likes for 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 comments that are <laughs> that look ridiculous from this perspective. It's like, whoa, we got a lot oh, yeah, of no, he, he, break he, the messes up. He bought it. Let me let me give a parting shot here, which is do not take everything on the internet at face value. There's a wonderful documentary out there called Fake Famous. Highly encourage it for people to watch it. It is not just an American thing where anyone under a certain age and, and uh, um, Professor Dave's one of them, you can buy anything you want when it comes to social media, anything like subs, hits, comments, the whole gamut. And there's some people that will just overspend and overspend to do it. And he's one of them. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and um, th th that's, I've got to, just so people have heard me say this, but when I speak to Karen on Wednesday, I'm going to be um, uh, bringing my wife along for the conversation, Andrea, because she's studying this uh, maturation coaching and, and yeah. how um, childhood trauma is very much playing out for, for most of us because it's the trauma in the first three or seven years that um, tends to shape your 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 way forward, and right. and part of my journey of self 
with realization, because I was atheist seven years ago, but part of my journey of moving towards this realization that, you know, the temple of God is, is, is you, it's you, you are carrying, this is my view anyway, that yep. we're carrying the, the, the essence of God within us and, yep. and that this is God's temple. And, and in the way that people are so concerned about the environment out there, they should also be concerned about the environment within, because once we alter the environment within, so the world around us will start to alter in line with that. Sure. And, and I think that's about as powerful as I can be in the world is is to make myself a, a more whole right. and attune to the damage. You know, it's one thing to realize that you've been lied to about everything. It's like, well, then what did all of those lies do to the real you? Right. And so I'm working on that. That's a, that's an area of real interest for me and my wife. And so when we speak with Karen, we're going to try and t talk on subjects um, right. to do with that. I've got a few other coaches coming up. Uh, a few other um, call, calls coming up with other people in that vein. Um, but we'll see, you know, I've got this this apartment for another 10 days or something, and it has 5G Wi-Fi, nice. um, a, a bit of stability. So I thought I'd reach out to a few of my friends in the in the community and just start this conversation because I still want to continue doing activism, say, like in the street. I kind of get off a little bit, you know, on, on that. I do. I do. Some, some of it I don't like very much, but to be honest with you. But there's this video I, I mentioned that I hadn't released it because I, I've got to go and watch it back again. But, you know, these women were so contentious with me. I'm like, oh, do I want people to see that or will it even Well, as long as you prep it in the title, you should be fine. You know, as long as you put in the title that, that it is a, uh, you know, whatever adjectives you want to use, heated, contentious, uh, and, and what it's about, you know, if they're, you know, I mean, yeah, I don't, want sense, don't want to say sensationalism, but if you want to say, uh, um, you know, heated debate about uh, Islam versus what Christianity or what, however you want to say it, as long as you put it in the title, people are fine. Uh, all they want is a, a disclaimer. So, yeah. Well, I'll probably get around to it. I've, I've got a few, I've got a bit of the content still to, to download from that. But we've got this a little bit of window of stability, but I want to continue doing more of this kind of, um, you know, chatting with the community sure. and helping to, to create uh, cohesion. Um, when I was in South Africa last year, I saw bits of separation and division and so on and so forth. So forth. But if I at least have stated myself, like this is where I'm at, I don't have a problem with someone being where they're at. You know, that's... Right. That's their journey, and I'm I'm not to I'm not trying to shake that, um, but I do feel like having done a little round of, of England recently and met some other flat earthers and so on. I'm I'm reinvigorated with this idea that you know I have a voice that I want to try and use to the common good for um, for us all, but you know in this community and and then maybe beyond that. So so that's going to be my offering over the hopefully over the coming year. I mean, um, I, I once again I am so grateful for the work that you've done and uh, that you, you continue to support what we do. Um, and um, as Joe Mama says, we're all walking around on this flat plane, regardless of your the religion your parents chose. There you uh, go. <laughs> you know, um, but I I do I wish you all well, and I will definitely give you a shout again, Mark, uh, very soon. I'd, I'd love to to chat with you some more. The more we, I, more I do this, the more comfortable I feel just chatting. Like I said, I'm not used to being in front of the camera. Quite well, so. you do very well. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I shouldn't say so. That's that's part of the words. Old. <laughs> My dad was called sir. Sir, yeah. the sir the end. Um, we're all ants in this world. We don't need to be. We are meant to be the center of creation. We are meant to be these divine, loving beings. We come from a loving, loving, loving God, you know, a creator that is so loving. That's my sense of it. And and so my sense is that we've been brought from that loving place into a place that challenges that. And how are you going to meet that challenge is, I think, what the life story is. Well said. Mark Sargent, thank you so much. I want to say good night and uh, thank you very much for coming along, everybody. And